Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. Today for you all, we have a lovely, wonderful Valentine's Day 2v2 tournament. Uh, lots of good teams looking in here. We got Paul and Layers, Cody and Light Tunnel, Face and Girls, Attire and Natalie, Adultery and Fat Duel. Just lots and lots of solid teams here. Should be a very good tournament, but... I want to go ahead. I want to start getting right into the meat of this tournament. So let's go ahead and let's go jump into game one. All right. So game one, we got Baron Ban coming out first for Hellarine and Turk. Ares coming out for Rose and Envy. Uh, the Baron Ban kind of makes sense. He has been a very solid tanky mage amongst the mages for a long time, as well as just having you know some pretty easy lockdown with his three. And obviously the sustain advantage coming from his two. And dude, I, anybody who's played against a good Baron, I think will agree with me on this statement. But Baron has one of the most annoying passives in the game. The hysteria building up and stacking on you. Like the things it does to your attack speed just makes me so angry as a hunter player. I am a little interested to see the Vimana ban. I don't really see Vimana as one of those characters that's worth a ban. Uh, just because, you know, there's other things open. The Erlang, the Osiris, um, Bologna, Amaterasu. Other characters that kind of just outdo him at what he's trying to do in a 2v2 mode. Uh, where he doesn't just have that, like, dominating factor over certain characters like he would in a 1v1. Uh, Soul is actually going to be the first pick for Turk here. That's really surprising. I have not enjoyed Soul as a character for a long time. So, very interested to see her locked in and see what the plan is there with her. Obviously, she has good early pressure. She's got decent clear. Um, Disapparate still just a really, really strong escape. And there's the Osiris pick. I expect Osiris to be one of the top picks for this entire tournament. Uh, and I don't think he's going to end up running into too much trouble on this Soul this game. Horus... Uh, kind of just one of those characters that falls off a little bit as you get higher and higher in elo i feel like not a bad character per se but he doesn't have quite the damage that you need in order to pull off winning a clean fight maybe with anubis just shredding and ulting off the combo to be enough but we will see how it goes oh and baron reduces your power by 30 percent i actually didn't ever realize that it was that much. That is kind of freaking ridiculous. But, all right. We'll wait here for a second. Let them get a few minutes into this game. I don't know. My first uh, guess for this game, I'm going to be putting it on Turk and Hellerine. I think they've got this one in the bag. Osiris is just such a solid pick. Honestly, given three, four items, he probably can just 2v2 the Anubis and Horus. So long as Hellerine eats one combo of abilities for him, I think he's got it. Uh, it would be really interesting to see the upset from this Anubis horse, though. Maybe, you know, Rose is going to take the dog for a walk and surprise us here. Oh, quad defense soul. Wait a minute. You might be onto something. You might be onto something. I think Rose Envy will be slain. I agree. I agree. I don't think Anubis is going to have a great time this game. That, I mean, Hellerine has the CC immunity from his ult, too. Like, there's just so many ways for this soul to survive. Honestly, if he picks up an early, like, Pestilence or something and just kind of plays this one, like, dual, even, like, maybe a Spirit Robe, maybe a Mantle. Um, shoot, even a Thebes on the soul with Lifesteal. It's just going to be impossible to kill him as this game goes on. I forget how long this spectate takes. How long it's going to be before we're actually able to get into this one. Surely Afro's banned at every game. I don't expect Afro to ever make it through one of these games. Her early pressure is too strong. She just is meant for a 2v2 mode where you're kissed to one person and constantly buffing each other. Like... I don't see it happening. I think she gets through every game other than maybe Paul and Layers let her through because they have confidence in playing against her. What is Anubis build? Full lifesteal, baby. Full lifesteal. There's only one way you play Anubis, and that's it. 
that's how you do it. If you're doing anything else, you're not playing Anubis right. It's really Anubis quad, do you? I just, I mean, maybe a breastplate. But I don't know. I feel like you can't afford the slots for defense on Anubis. Because you're just going to get walked down by the Osiris anyways if you can't kill fast enough. You kind of have to rely on the Horus Peel and just killing Soul. Like, just getting rid of her and then 2v1ing the Osiris. I don't know. It's a very tough position to be in. Yo, congratulations, Bean Scott. And here we are loading in. Game one, round one. No Osiris really played by Turk here. Maybe he's not going to know that he can just run down the Anubis. Maybe it's going to be a little bit difficult for him. But let's go ahead and look at what people are opting to or opting into for these early builds here. Um, I really don't know what starters people are going to favor in this mode. I think Axe is extremely strong. Level 20, obviously. It's going to be a little bit harder. Uh, is it really going to be that hard to get to level 20? It might not be that difficult. Mannequin's out for the soul. That one kind of makes sense. Tainted for the Osiris. I don't hate that. Uh, you know, obviously the Anubis is going to go into a bunch of lifesteal here. And Osiris looks like he's going to start building into Thebes. I'm expecting that to be a Pythags on Hellarine. Uh, just the aura is extremely, extremely useful. Very good things to have. And Horus does opt into the axe as well as it looks like he might be rushing a Pestilence. Possibly a Heart Word or a Talisman kind of leaning away from the talisman but it it could happen it could definitely happen and the red team is going to be a little late to clearing here uh looks like turk and hellarine are going to have a definite xp lead over these two as they're going to be clearing both buffs and it looks like anubis and horus are just going to be clearing the one it won't provide way too much benefit for uh turk and hellarine here on this first wave but as they clear this first wave there we go looking to get some good return damage yep there it is they've cleared the melees they hit level four his anubis is already just getting ran down this is not what you want to see for rose in march hmm. looks like they're gonna go ahead and clear out this purple buff just start building themselves a nice comfortable lead and i I dare say that this one might already be getting put in the hands of Hellarine and Turk. That's tragic for that Locust Breath to get stopped there. Both minis are still up. Level 5 for the Soul and Osiris. Although Osiris is Oom, so it doesn't look like they can just combo with the ultimates here. Oh, maybe with Anubis walking up. And this looks pretty free. If they just both ult the Anubis, he's dead. Uh, it's not even going to be needed. Uh, as Hellarine will hit the autos. Can he find one more? And there we go. Double kill, level 5. Not clearing that speed buff. Really coming out into being a problem there. Hellarine's going to stay and be a little bit more greedy here as well. And to grab himself these minis. Can't blame him too much. He's not in a too sticky of a situation here. Both players still have beads up you know they're already up two levels i i think this one might just be done for i think round one of this tournament is already over blue team just out drafted they got the early lead and i don't think there's gonna be any way for this anubis to fight back into this i also think that the anubis probably should have gone with a magus rush i don't really like bancroft's rush on anubis in a 2v2 mode i feel like you just need to Really explode one person and get rid of them right away. Uh, they're going to look for the ultimate there. Not find anything off of it. Gosh, this is just... It, it is not going well. Things are not going as planned for the red team right now. They are struggling. Second spawn of buffs will be coming up soon. Hellarine's actually going to get a full Bancroft on that back. Not go into a Pythax for his teammate. He's going to play a little greedy. I don't think it's going to have too much impact here, but 
I do still feel like the Pythags might have been the way to play uh, in a little bit closer of a match. Thebes also finished for Turk. Thebes is one item that, as of lately, I really haven't found myself building that much on Warriors in general. Uh, I feel like it's kind of just a wasted slot in Joust. That may be a different story when it comes to the 2v2, but I feel like, you know, maybe just a Phalanx Rush into a Shogun tier and not delaying those items might be more beneficial when you have the auto attack character that is Soul. And Turks straight in with the Osiris ultimate. Full combo coming out. Oh, and Envy is going to be able to walk away this time. That's a lot used from the blue team for no kill there. But they will send him back. They'll slowly get this minion in. Not going to be able to get any bonus tower damage with it. But that is still a lot of pressure. Showing that Rose has to constantly be respecting the amount of damage that they can put out. And honestly, if they were any farther out than that tower... I don't think they would have been able to live. Oh, my boy, Jimmy. Good old, good old Jimmy. Uh, Turk's actually picking up that purple buff. I don't think he should be picking up purple buff at this point. They've got free red pressure. They shouldn't be able to be stopped from getting it. As well as, even if you are giving the speed buff to Hellerine. That was a pretty good ultimate from Rose coming out there. Oh, that is so much damage coming out. Turk's got to be maxing his too, right? Yep. That spirit flail is doing tons of damage. But the Horus ult in. I respect the effort here. Turk is out of mana. Can they CC him and catch him? Nope. He's going to get just enough mana out and Osiris ult away. But that was actually a really good effort. I think that was a really good turnaround. Oh, Hellerine not quite able to hit all the autos. Very close. Almost finds that return kill on Envy. And he's just going to use this Disap rate to immune some damage here as he clears out and just beats the crap out of Horus. It's like a wing shard popped. Don't think he's going to be able to... Oh, he is going to be able to find the kill. The ultimate coming out. They're going to look at red buff here. And I mean, that last fight was closer. Oh, the glyph already purchased. That seems a little bit early to be getting the glyph. I mean, both players on the red team actually opting into the, rushing their glyphs it definitely seems a little bit early especially when you're behind like this but they have shown a little bit of promise shown some good ideas there with the horus ult and chasing out maybe they'll be able to find one turnaround kill you know grab a tower at two or three items and be able to turn this one back let's see the, the fight over jimmy here turk's taking a decent amount of poke uh, and the Osir or Anubis ult will come out. I don't know how I feel about him just ulting like that without the setup. And a ton of damage is going to get returned. Oh, they're not quite able to find the Horus as well. But these fights are still just way too dominant by the Soul and the Osiris. Anubis just doesn't have quite enough damage right now. They are going to be getting the tower here. They'll even still be able to go back grab the scepter and it looks like they will be back in time for the purple buff as well they'll even be able to clear their blue on the way just a cool calm and collected game so far by the blue team it is not going too well the red team is going to need some sort of good pick here some really good shutdown on this soul in order to find their way back and honestly if Horus gets the kill they're still going to be too far behind they're not going to be able to find the gold and it kind of looks like they're looking for something now nope looks like they were over there checking those minis seeing if they could get any extra farm well the blue team is over here and getting bull demon and i think this one's just going to spell it for the game there's going to be no defending this game once that phoenix goes down and fire waves are pushing But let's see as they chase out here. It kind of looks like they're just ignoring Horus for the moment. I mean, rightfully so. Like I said, his damage kind of falls off. He didn't go into anything to really give bonus pressure in the early game, like maybe a Runeforged or a Jotun's Rush that I might have liked to see. And just look at all the poke they're doing to this Anubis. Yep, there we go. Just nothing he is able to do to fight back there. They're almost down a full item. 
with the Shoguns and Thieves already completed, as well as Demonic and Bancroft's on Solo Cyrus. And yeah, it is just, they're too far behind. Things went awry when they didn't clear their buff early and were behind for the level five fight. They gave up the first blood uh, to Soul in doing so. And I mean, that's just gonna be, I mean, that's a clean game one. That's all there is to it. That is an extremely, extremely clean game one. Nothing more to say there. A eight minute victory. That might be one of the fastest games we see in this tournament. I would be surprised to see anything more so, but with a team comp like Solo Cyrus, you do expect to have some pretty quick games there. They're not gonna look for things to go too long. Let's take a quick look at the stats here. Yeah, some decent damage coming out of the Anubis, but Horus just down so much. You know, Anubis doing about the same as Osiris, Horus down a whole 3,600 from the soul, just not able to keep up, not able to fight back well enough. And it's just going to go poorly from there. But alrighty. That is a solid game one, round one. Alright, so round two here. We've got Paul in layers versus Iba and Chubby Ostrich. Obviously, everybody knows who Paul and layers are. Paul, one of the most decorated and best mechanical players in the SPL. I mean, really, since his career started in the SPL. Lair is also a very mechanically talented player. Not quite the same decoration that we've seen in the Paul League or the Pro League. Paul League. I mean, yeah, it is kind of the Paul League sometimes. But um, not the same amount of decoration, but also still a very good mechanical player. A very knowledgeable character. Um, and I've seen these two run several 2v2 tournaments together, so I know they'll have good synergy. I know they've got a few, you know, secret comps up their sleeve that maybe we'll have the luck to pick out today. But the Kuzenbo and Aphrodite bands coming out from them. I actually really like the Kuzenbo ban. I think he's just kind of a monster right now. Uh, the past long while, he's been extremely, extremely good. And Kuzenbo just kills any carry he wants once you get late enough in his game. Vulcan and Ryzen bands coming out for Iba and Chubby Ostrich, who deserve some respect themselves. You know, both of them very high level conquest players, good consistent players, but I have not seen them in as many 2v2 tournaments. So I'm interested to see how they do when they're stuck or er, stacked up against some of the best of the best. The Baba Yaga, Ryzen, and Vulcan bands coming out. I feel like you shouldn't be trying to target ban out Paul's god pool here. There are so many gods that he can play. The set is one I think is a very good band coming out. We've all seen Paul play set. For anyone who's played against Paul on his set, even more reason that you'd want to ban that character. But the Achilles pick coming out here first. I don't know how I feel about this. Achilles, traditionally a very good character, definitely not anything bad, but we've just seen utter domination from the auto attack characters coming out in Conquest, from them in Duel, so, or, I mean, and them as well in Joust, so I don't know if that trend is going to continue in the 2v2 mode, or if Paul and Layers are going to be able to take this Achilles the whole way through and take it home with them. Hmm. You've got to be wondering what's on the mind of Ibba and Ostrich here on how they're thinking they're going to counteract this Achilles. Hmm. Colin Tiamat. A very early game character with a very late game character. Uh, not that Colin falls off super heavily in the late game, but... Uh, T-Mat's early game is definitely not going to be anything pretty. It's going to be something that they're going to have to be very careful of and could end up spelling demise with one wrong step. I expect to see layers lock in some form of early game here that transitions decently well into late game. Uh, I'd say Hell, but Hell into Kukulun isn't the most enjoyable matchup. Maybe something like a Thoth. Um... What other mages are there that Paul likes to play a lot of? Um, hmm. I feel like there's some 
pick that I should be thinking of that I just cannot bring to mind right now. Is this a this is a hardcore strategy pick here. Mm -hmm. They are definitely thinking very carefully about this one. Baron is open. Something to be mindful of. I don't know if that's the best pick into Tiamat Kakolin. Although I'm sure Paul could make it work. Um, e shell. E shell is not something I have seen Paul play basically at all. But it is a character with good self peel, pretty good early pressure, and I mean just a lot of lockdown when you're chasing somebody down. If that Kakolin uses his dash in the wrong way, uses his ultimate in the wrong way, he's going to be hit by many things. And he's not going to have a very good time with it. It's also somebody that you are able to build tablet on very well, which is something that, much like Paul, I'm very much a fan of. And he could probably pull off pretty easily in this game. Huh. <sighs> All right, I do expect this to be one of the better games of this tournament, so I'm remaining hopeful on it. This is one of the kind of dark horse teams up against one of the uh, very, <laughs> you know, very much fan favorites. Joust a dual map, oh. Joust map, the Jade Corruption map. This is single elim, right? This is single elim until the finals. All right. Ooh. I'm expecting layers to opt into the Warriors X start here. Uh, Kakolin has a little bit more freedom, and it looks like he's going to use that to go into the Blue Stone start. Um, it should help them a little bit with that early pressure. Oh, something went wrong with the game, I guess. GG's, they already have sixed. Oh, they're all level one. That makes sense. Yeah, should be level three. Should be level three. It's all right. We'll be able to load back into this one really quickly here and get this started. Gosh, <laughs> dude. They beat Paul in seven seconds. That's the fastest game I've ever seen. We should give out a Barty stream uh, award for that. <laughs> the fastest game ever. Yeah, being level one to start that would be a little bit slow. A little bit slow. <laughs> Got infinite gold per minute, though. Just everybody farming at maximum capacity. <laughs> yeah, it's all good, Paul. All good. I can't blame you there, but it is funny. Yep, there we go. Back into the custom blind pick, and we will hop into this one. We'll have to do a little bit of editing magic for this game. Party, you're garbage. Party, you're like actually shit at the game. Yo, Blumps, welcome back for the 27 months with the primer. I appreciate it, sir. Welcome, welcome. I hope you're having a good day, man. All right. This time for real. In all truthfulness, that was just genius play by Paul to make the lobby wrong because now he knows exactly how the red team is going to start here. The conduit gem into blue stone on Kukulin. And they know exactly how they're going to counteract it, I'm sure. Because that plays into how this game is going to go so much. But, like I was saying, Layers going for that Axe start. No surprise there. Paul going with the Sands of Time into the Lost Artifact. Knowing Paul, um, you know, untraditionally to how most mages build in this mode, I think that's going to be a Doom Orb. In fact, I would bet money that he is going to go do more with that item. But let's see. It looks like red team going to be a little bit close on getting their start. Tiamat not going to be eating 
the speed buff. Doesn't care about it. He doesn't know the tech quite that well. Because uh, it really doesn't slow down their clear that much. But normal, typical clears coming out here. A little bit slow clear from the red team. No surprise there. So Paul and Layers will get the early pressure. And they're just going to start laying it on Tiamat right now. He's going to have to jump out. Already taken half of his health. And I like this May start as well from Layers here. Really looking to abuse the early game. And just make sure that they don't give them an easy time getting to the late game with this team at. I do believe that mini went to the way of Iba. But he's going to take a lot of poke for that. Forced to jump out and lose some rage. Uh, and this team at not going to have the easiest time clearing this early game still. They're really relying on that Kokolin in order to help clear. But it looks like they do not want to give up this buff. And that mini did actually go the way of Paul and Layers. Because you can see they hit 5 there. But a solid start here. Both players are going to go to their respective minis now. And it looks like we are going to have a nice, calculated, slow start. This is what I was hoping to see. Oh, I might have to take that back for a second. Layers putting Tiamat in execution range as they jump in. Tiamat not quite in execution range, so going to get out. Not able to bait the Aegis from him. That will be Kakolin Blink. Good CC immunity from the Tiamat. Uh, and it looks like Layers is just going to walk away from this one. Paul getting caught slightly. He still has ultimate, and it looks like he's going to use it now. He's able to dodge just enough and heal just enough. Layers is going to be able to clean this one up. And that's two kills going the way of the blue team. An extremely yeah. close fight for First Blood there. I definitely thought Paul was going to go down there. A good Aegis on his part. Uh, he's trying his best to die to this red buff right now. But I don't think it's quite going to happen. So he will pick that one up. Looks like they're gonna, going to have to give up the scepter here. But that's not too bad. Hmm. Something to note with both of these teams. This scepter is actually going to be really crucial to pick up from time to time. Because for those of you who don't know, it does heal towers. So that means that the lack of a hunter... Um, the lack of like a true AA warrior for both teams this game means that it's going to be really hard to push that tower down. If the right team gets Scepter at the wrong time, they just heal up their tower from 300 HP to full HP. And there's going to be nothing you can do to stop it. You're going to have to repoke the whole thing down. You're going to have to take the entire thing at once with Bull Demon. It's going to spell some difficulties for whichever team that becomes a factor for. Uh, layers will get both chesters there just a nice little bonus of gold and yep there it is the doom orb for paul expected nothing less they're just looking to abuse this early game use that power it's a standard for paul for sure uh and i mean something you definitely want to do against a god like team at you don't want to let her get to that late game those four or five items gosh I was about to say Paul doesn't miss, but Chubby Atris with some good jukes there. Not letting it be too easy. But the E-Shell 1 always surprises me too. It always goes a little bit longer than I think it will. And it always catches me by surprise, so I can't blame Ashris for getting hit by that part. But some good trading coming out here. They're going to look to put this Kukulin in range, and he doesn't have Aegis, so they're going to get him. Continuing to dive a little bit harder. Paul's got to be a little bit careful, but that's the whole kit. Asha's juking out for what he can, but it's not going to be enough. Just too much damage coming through. That Jotun wow. Thrush on layers. Just absolutely taking it to him. And it looks like they want to try to push down this tower here. I mean, Paul and layers, man. Like I said, they've got the synergy. They know how to play it. They've done tons and tons of two versus two tournaments together. You know they're going to be on point and they're going to be thinking the same things. And they're just showcasing what they're capable of here. Telling every other team that they should be afraid to play against them. But it's amazing to think that this game could have gone a much different way as well. If the red team was able to first blood call in that first play. He got down to some very low amounts of HP. 
Uh, and they will steal the red buff away here. So that's a nice little win for them. Hmm. Third spawn for the buffs coming in here. Layers and Paul kind of looking like they want to invade that blue buff a little bit. Magister is going to be forced to use his escape. And is it going to seriously hinder his clear this wave? Uh, and Layers and Paul don't want to invade. They're just going to take it safely, play it smart, not risk anything, which I do not mind. Hmm. I'm curious if Paul is going to end up going into a Divine Ruin or a Spear of Deso here. Uh, because there really isn't that much healing other than the team at passive. But Divine Ruin is just a solid item. The passive effect on it just giving you that constant little bit of spark of damage. Not only doing the damage and applying the effect, but also being a good deterrence to this Kakolin's Blink. Uh, and it's a Blackthorn Rush here from Layers. Not rush, but picking up the black thorns. Again, an item that, I mean, it's been out of the game for a long time. I'm a little surprised that he didn't pick up a rune forged. Because uh, I feel like it works pretty well with his team here. Uh, but not looking to take too much poke for the scepter here. And this is kind of what I meant. This Kakolin, after they clear wave, can just go back, heal up the tower. That little bit of damage that Paul and Laird were able to get earlier is just going to disappear. But, oh my gosh, just be all in on Tiamat, and that man is gone. You gotta be ready for that one. Cannot be caught slack in his Aegis just now coming up. Uh, and the Laird is going to be beating the crap out of this tower. Just doing a very good job between the two of them of zoning out Kukulin, making sure he misses a little bit of that XP and letting the minions beat down on the tower as much as they can. But there you go. There's that scepter we were talking about. Kukulin healing it up. That damage they did on the last push, almost nearly gone. And he is going to rage here. So it looks like he's going to be able to defend this. He might even be able to mess around and get a good kill on Paul here. Oh, but the XU coming out from layers. Team at not able to hit quite enough. Paul should be able to get out of this one. Layers might even find a kill himself. Oh my gosh. Uh, layers has got the axe proc up. Can you get the one? There it is. And that's going to be the kill. That is going to be the tower. Uh, I don't know if they'll push past getting this wave. I think they're probably just going to look to clear the jungle here. Layers wants to get one good auto on that Phoenix. Show the intimidation. Paul's going to go ahead and go pick up his red buff. But oh, Chubby Ostrich just choking a little bit. Not quite able to hit enough abilities. And bring that one home for the kill on Paul. Hmm. <clears throat> there you go. And it will end up being that Spear of Deso for Paul. Not enough healing to thwart him getting a Divine Ruin yet. And he's going to get the Staff Mirrored in. Looks like he wants to go back and finish that now. And I'm guessing that Layers is going to be working himself into a Glad Shield here. Not many items in that tree make too much sense otherwise. And he is going to give up that Scepter there to Kukulin. Not looking to fight over it too much. Not something he's really worried about. He just wanted to get that extra XP from the Meteor. Looks like Paul and Layers are starting up the Bull Demon here. Kakolin knows he might be able to look for a steal. Uh, looks like Paul's waiting for his ability to come up to secure this. And there we go. Very good secure from Paul. Him and Layers are going to look to chase out, but not get too much off of it. Uh, Blink from Layers will force Ostrich out again, but Paul's going to get caught by that too. Looks like it might be able to get him out. Good ultimate tanked by Osiris. But oh my gosh, the freaking damage coming out of Eshel there. Kokolin's still just not able to survive. 
I wish I could see how many ticks he took from that ultimate. But that was absurd. It just seemed endless. They're not even going to wait for the minions to push. They've got a massive lead on this Tiamat. And he is not going to defend this. He's just going to run away. Or Paul's just going to run away. Avoid the damage from that tornado. As they just slowly whittle this one down. Potentially looking to see if they can get another kill on Ostrich here, which might even let them end the game. Or do you want people in round three to wait? Uh, yes. Wait for round three. Yeah, red team looking to give chase here. Red buff will be up soon. Paul's wrapping around. This could be a really good gank. Uh, Ostrich knows. The Cullen caught in kind of a rough spot, but he is able to juke out the CC from Eshel. A really good stun coming out, but he's in range of that ultimate again, and Paul is not going to miss those, man. Just enough ticks in order to bring Ostrich down. And Iba needs to rage here and see if he can find anything, but I don't think he's going to be able to do anything here. He's going to be able to chase them out, but the Titan's already poked a half. He's just going to have to sit here and accept the fact that he's got to clear this fire wave and he is going to keep taking poke while doing so. Player is going to go ahead and clear that red buff. Oh, this looks all but over here for the red team. They are going to have to find something quick. And I don't know if it's going to be better for them to kill Paul or Layers because whichever one they leave alive might just clean up the rest of the game. It will actually be a Void Shield for Kukulin as well. Not grabbing that Glad Shield like I was expecting. Wants a little bit more penetration for himself, I suppose. Uh, and it looks like he's going a Hydra's next in order to finish off his cooldown there. So that makes sense. You don't want to overcap with the Glad Shield. Hmm. All right, though. Paul, not afraid to step up here on his own. He knows he's got that do more movement speed. He's got plenty of cooldown in order to stall for layers to arrive, as well as just the CC immunity, so he doesn't have to worry about the Kukulin ult and both actives up. He's more safe than ever, I'd argue. But it's like they're going to get a good bit of poke. Wow. I mean, only 10% pen on Paul so far, and he's still doing a good chunk of damage to this Kukulin. Yep, that is going to be death right there for the Tiamat. Not going to be able to kill the Kukulin as well, but they should be able to kill the Titan here. There we go, Kukulin just slightly too slow. He tried his best, but that is the well-oiled machine of Pollen Layers. One of the most fearsome two versus two teams that you will see play. Honestly, I mean, it was a good start by Ostrich and Ibba. They could have taken that game much farther, like I said, if they were able to get the first blood on Paul. But just by the skin of his teeth, he's able to make it out. They clean up and get the double kill. And that that was really just, you know, the first nail in the coffin for Ostrich and Ibba. You can't afford to get behind when you are a late game team like that who's going to lose in the early game. But it was a very good effort, a well-played game by both sides. I certainly have no complaints about that one. All right, so round three of the tournament here. We got Cody and Light Tunnel versus Chad and Ukarak. These are two lineups I was expecting to see for tournaments. Like, this is much more typical to the lineups I play uh, and the comps that I have seen when I played in 2v2 tournaments consistently. You run that auto attack warrior and you run some semi tanky mage, uh, or in this case, a semi damagey guardian for Cody on that Karan. But I like this. This is going to be a game that I definitely think will go the distance and we'll be able to get lots and lots of fun out of. Unfortunate that we weren't able to see the bands. I would have loved to see the way the picks and bands went in this one. But all right. Pretty typical starts coming out from both sides. 
Um, looks like light tunnels, a little unsure of what he wants to build into first and what active he wants to get. Uh, and it's going to end up making him a little bit late to speed buff. Chad and Ukrag actually doing a backwards clear here. So that way they're able to grab the blue buff. That's interesting. I would have expected him to just eat blue or uh, eat speed buff and then go into his flight stance and pick up the speed buff. Hmm. I mean, they'll get to wave at about the same time though. So ultimately it doesn't do anything. B is bands. Oh, you guys are so smart. All right, so we have Fenrir, Hades, Baron, and Freya for the blue team. And Vamana, Osiris, Kamazats, and Osiris for the red team. I actually really agree with all of those bands for the most part. I still don't know how I feel about the Osiris band, or not Osiris band, the Vamana band in itself. Um, but everything else looks pretty good. The Hades is also a little bit questionable. But one flavor band on both sides makes sense they're not gonna play too risky on it and i mean you can already see the poke starting to stack up on chad a little bit here hmm also something to note for this early game chad has horrific emblem uh which will do really good against the shielding and anti-heal for the blue team still but the sprint has already been picked up and upgraded once here no it's not been upgraded once uh, but it's already been picked up to counteract that Gilgamesh ultimate as well as counteract the Horrific. So the blue team should be able to choose when they want to fight in this game pretty well in the early. Hmm. Well, so I think for a while uh, in these early game level 5 fights, the fights should go the way of Cody and Light Tunnel. Uh, unless... There are just some massive, massive AoE abilities that are hit on the side of the red team. But the ultimate's coming out. Good CC. Uh, red buff does go the way of the blue team, I believe. I think I can't tell quite for sure, but I think so. Which, I mean, a little bit unfortunate. Tiamat did beads and ult to try to get that, but he just wasn't quite on the money with it. Um, also, something to note, Light Tunnel going into this Thieves early again. I I don't know, man. I still just don't really agree with the Thieves rush. Uh, it makes a little bit more sense in this game with them looking to play really slow. Uh, you know, having that car on. They want to get several items online before they're fighting back. But I feel like just going into the Phalanx, going into, I mean, Glad Shield, going into Shoguns, all of those items, just putting yourself an item behind for that feels a little bit risky. Um, also, Gilgamesh, getting Gem of Fate from his passive, the best single item you can get from that passive. I mean, 10% cooldown is amazing, first of all. Uh, and it's also the most expensive tier one item that you can get so he's going to get the most gold value out of it if he decides he doesn't want to keep it um which honestly i could kind of see him going either way about this game well light tunnel looking to just get those axe procs be annoying as much as he can here it looks like you wants to go back and start stacking his book of thoth or potentially a tablet of destinies which is what he will choose hmm it looks like maybe a small fight over this meteor. Maybe Chad steps up, tries to kick away the Erlang, but he will not do so. And we are just going to have a lot of calm, cool, and collected farming going in this early game. All right, this is what I was hoping for. This means we're going to get into that late game. We're going to get several items online for each character. We're going to get that Tablet of Destiny stacked. And we're going to be able to see who... Uh, you know, who really is able to take it to who and who drafted better? I don't know. I'm definitely partial towards the Karan Erlang here. I think Erlang's super, super busted at the moment. Um, like, not only does he out auto attack a Gilgamesh, uh, as long as he builds properly, that is. 
but he also just is able to chase down a Tiamat pretty well. He's got the knockup immunity. He's got the taunt. He's got the pin. Tiamat's going to have to use her CC immunities and her jump and everything very well in order to, you know, continue to stay safe as Erling gets items online. Hmm. Yeah, neither team having too much pressure here in this early game. No one's really going to be able to go for a bull demon or, you know, just get a double kill and run down the tower. Even if this Gilgamesh does die, Team Matt's going to be able to clear the waves pretty well and make it difficult for Erlang and Karan to push down a tower uh, and vice versa. As long as Gilgamesh has ult or something up, his 2-1 should be able to do good damage to the wave and there's no way these two will ever kill him. But Ukrak doing a good job of farming those Tablet of Destiny stacks. Already at 7 for 6.5 minutes into the game. It's not too bad. They will trade a good bit of damage here on the Chad, though. Not wanting to fully commit to the fight with anything. I can respect that decision. Their blue buff is up, so it looks like they're going to back off here. Oh, lots and lots of small skirmishes going on, but nobody wanting to pull the trigger and commit to a big fight here just yet. I'm guessing it'll probably be around that 3-4 item uh, mark where we'll start to get some more explosive fights going on. Hmm. Hopefully we'll get to see here. If Chad does decide he wants to upgrade this gem of fate, he's going to skip over it for now. Looks like he wants to get into an early Shogun and to grab a ward for the Bull Demon. Uh, Blink coming out for the Erlang. Beads Aegis for the Karan. It's a little surprising given how tanky he is that he didn't want to opt into a little bit more offensive second relic. Maybe like a Bracer, maybe a Sunder. But you know, maybe even a Meditation, honestly, for the cooldown reduction. But it looks like he just wants to play extra safe. Make sure he's not at risk of dying to that Gilgamesh all on his own. Um, yeah. Yukarak will be looking to go into his Book of Thoth here second. Just, you know, he's looking for that 20-minute match. Really wanting to get his whole build online. Get as much as he can out of those procs. But they are starting to have a little bit of difficulty fighting back due to this build. He's not going to have that pen online very quickly. And I mean, he's not going to be able to get Soul Reaver or anything as well for a while. So he's definitely a few items out before he's really going to be the scary monster that Team Matt can be. Chad's going to take a lot of damage for walking around that way. Still... I'm guessing that yep, Cody and Light Tunnel will not look to aggress too much. They just know that they're not going to be able to get anything off of a kill or even necessarily kill. They just have to keep waiting. But Erlang will start working into that Executioner's or that Kin size here, looking to get a little bit more damage online. Uh, I'm guessing Gilgamesh will probably look to match him with the same once he finishes the Shogun's. There you go. Book of Thoth online as well. Cody's going to back and finish his spirit robe here. Oh, um, my bad. That will actually be a full mantle of discord. I'm surprised he didn't want to go the spirit robe against the Gilgamesh kick. I don't know if that's still a uh, super strong counter, but I remember that being a very good counter for a very long time. But I suppose he just wants that extra safety of the mantle. He's able to greet out a little bit because he is Karan and he is getting that extra gold. So not too risky of a decision. Let's see. Uh, blue team up 1700 XP and about 400 gold. Uh, I mean, I would guess that most of that gold, wow, it's actually not on the Karan. The Erling is actually the one who is going a very big farming mode right now. It's got to be a lot of the small little meteor shards that he's getting, giving him that bonus gold. I suppose maybe he's been around a few more waves, uh, made sure he's in a few more minions. 
range than the Karan. But that small gold lead will continue to build up over time. And the XP lead on the race to 20 is going to be a way bigger factor right now. If Erlang's able to get to 20 and get that Axe of Animosity, even a Sundering Axe and just continuously poke down, things are going to look very good for them. But I think I myself would lean towards the Axe of Animosity and just lawn mower somebody down with his autos. But we will see. We will see. Hmm. Blue team not too interested in staying for the meteor here. Or they think they'll get back in time. But that's an XE finished for light tunnel. Chad going to lay a little bit longer. Wanting to get himself a, uh, you know, something that builds off of that spiked shield, tower shield, uh, beforehand. Maybe looking for his own Berserkers or potentially looking for that Phalanx or maybe even a Void Shield. I don't know. I myself definitely have found it more beneficial to go the Phalanx lately. But maybe he values the Berserkers passive that much. Hmm. We will see. Still holding on to that gem of fate as well, and they do have buff or they do have wards over here on the bull demon, so they will know. They have to be a little bit careful about taking this fight, uh, as well as taking the greedy way around. He is going to be able to kick Erling away, so he's not going to take too much poke. But gosh, Cody not going to pick up those coins is is really bothering me. The free extra five gold sitting there, Cody. You don't know that could change the entire game. That could be the winning factor. But, all right. Ukarak slowing down a little bit on the tablet stacks. He's about halfway done. Uh, also about halfway through stacking his Book of Thoth. And it looks like he's going to grab himself a Genji's here. Get a little bit tankier. Get a little bit more cooldown. I respect the decision. I think it's a really good item to pick up. Um, and I'm going to take a wild guess here that that is going to be a soul gem up next. Just every team at player I know has a hard on for that item. Hmm. And it also looks like Light Tunnel is going to be looking to build his kin size very quickly here. Not caring for the Shoguns. Uh, you know, believing he's plenty tanky with the Thebes and with his Berserkers. Just wants to get those damage items online, which I think is the correct decision. I still think skipping the Thebes, potentially, and just going a Shogun's immediately might have been a better move. But I'm biased. I'm an old man. I'm stuck in my ways. You know, I'm not a huge fan of change, so we'll see. The third item, Book of Thoth, coming out for Cody here on this car run. He is not worried about this game going late for those stacks. He is absolutely okay with it. He is ready to play this one out for another 15 minutes. No issues. <clears throat> Chad lingering over here. Not wanting to let Light Tunnel do the Bull Demon. So they will just get a very small skirmish as Chad kicks him away. Does a little bit of trading, but really doesn't want to mess around too much. Maybe we'll get a decent fight over this blue buff light tunnel committing to the team at a little bit and Chad missing the kick into the tower Unfortunate could have been a pretty decent turn of the damage for the red team there But yeah, who are we kidding here guys? You're not really gonna set up. Oh, there comes the ultimate That's the beads coming out for team at really good timing on that wave light tunnel is able to pick up the kill with the pin there Ultimate still up for Gilgamesh. He's just going to run past, clear the wave, stop every <laughs> inkling or every inclination that they had of them thinking they were going to be able to kill that tower. And he is just going to walk away because what are they going to do? Kill him? I don't think that's going to happen quite yet. Uh, and I'm actually wrong. 
Yukarak not going into the Soul Gem. I'm going to guess that it'll be a Typhons instead then. Looking to get some of that penetration online. But that's a little bit surprising. If I was going penetration at this point, I definitely would have just opted into an Obsidian Shard. Uh, and look to get as much penetration as quickly as possible. But to each their own. Will Chad be able to make it over to this Bull Demon in time? He will. The Silence is going to miss, but he's not going to make it in range to clear. Didn't want to jump to commit to it. Yeah, I mean, the Kin size finished for Erlang definitely would have been risky to go for the jump. I probably would have tried committing to it. Because uh, they are just going to lose their tower for this. But I suppose that's not a big deal. Might have been a throw on my part to do so. Because it's much easier to dive the team at than dive the Gilgamesh. Yeah, Cody going into the Obsidian Shard here. I agree with that move. And Light Tunnel is just going to walk up and start hammering away at this tower. Doing the classic dual strategy. Ignore everybody. Hit tower. Me smork. Cody finally picking up his first red buff as the game as well. No longer cares for that blue buff. Or I haven't been able to say anything, but this has been a really good match, dude. Okay, this has been a very good match. Or, this is how I expect sorry, most of the games. Me, but... Yeah, we're not even in the semifinals yet. Mm-hmm. Cody, man, we have lots of good teams in this tournament. You got to weed out the first few games, get everybody settled in, get nerves settled, and now everyone is ready to play and everybody's on point. A good poke coming out here on Chad. Light Tunnel just absolutely not giving a singular heck about that tornado. And Cody is already starting to chunk both of them out. They might actually be able to get a rare look at killing the Gilgamesh here. But it doesn't look like they want to risk going for it. It would have been a very long engagement for them to do so. Also, Chad has finally sold the Gem of Fate, bought himself a Kinsai, so he does have some return auto attack damage. Uh, the Axe of Animosity has been picked up for Erlang, so he is going to be shredding anything and everything at this point. Obsidian Shard finished for Karan. So he hasn't finished his starter yet. Uh, timeline has been finished for the Tiamat, which could be very impactful in this next fight. And I'm going to guess that this uh, Gilgamesh is not too far off. Yeah, about 400 gold away from finishing his axe as well. Uh, you can take a peek. Karan is about the same. So expect all players to have their starters finished here very soon. Fight up. Or five items in the build. Karan will also finish his Book of Thoth here very shortly. Can I get a better view of it here? I can. Uh, I think that says 85 stacks on that book. But it'll be finished before the end of the next fight, I'm sure. It looks like 85 to me. Have the ult coming down the lane. It's going to grab Tiamat again. Not going to be able to chase through for the kill. But good damage coming through from the Gilgamesh. The Erlang ult will be a little bit late. Um, Red team showing some signs of life here. Showing that they're not just going to, you know, bend over and take it. They're going to fight back, and they've got the ability to do so now. Let's see, Acts of Animosity finished for Gilgamesh. Some penetration finally picked up. For the team at and the timeline finished for the Karan as well now. So both of these mages going to be extremely difficult to dive. But the Bull Demon is up yet again. We may see just a little bit of PvE coming through from the side of the blue team. As Red walks up to check. No wards in hand. So they do still have to be very careful about that. And Light Tunnel is going to go back. Is he going to finish his last item here? No, he's not. He's going to grab a sentry. I like that decision. This bull demon is definitely the name of the game at this point. These fights are way too long to get any quick, clean kills on anybody. It is definitely up to who is going to be able to secure this bull demon or who is going to be able to sneak it under the nose of the other team. Uh, and as saying that, red team gets a little bit of a whiff there, thinking that light tunnel might be over here doing this. 
and they would be correct. Chad actually doesn't have to be too careful about fighting this. I say as he takes a fifth of his HP bar. But it looks like we might get a good fight here. Maybe a 50-50. It appears neither team wants to commit to this too much. Light Tunnel blinks in. Gets hit by the kick. Gets a good ultimate. But better CC coming out from the side of the Tiamat. Is Light Tunnel going to be able to finish this one off? The dash comes back up. Oh, the timeline doesn't get procced, and Light Tunnel will go down wow. himself. Really, really good active usage and ultimate usage on the side of Eucharak there with that Tiamat. And now Chad is just going to start wailing away. That's a unfortunate kick to miss on the Karan, but this should still be the tower for Red Team here. I don't think Cody is going to be able to stop this push on his own. It's going to be a little bit too risky. Talisman has been finished for Erlang, so he's going to be a little bit tankier when he comes back up. But minions are in. Tower is taking a beating, and this tower will definitely be going down here. Chad can just tank this one off with no issues. Yeah, a little bit too far of a dive there from the blue team. They had to turn around a little bit quicker. Timeline never even getting popped by the Tiamat. But still... A very, very good fight. I think they just have to focus a little bit more on Gilgamesh. Once he uses that jump, once he uses that kick, you know, once they get Tiamat a little bit low and make him worry, that is when it's their time to turn and start fighting the Gilga because he's not a character you can ignore anymore. He's got that upgraded XE. He's got Animosity X. He's got Kins. He is going to be swinging, and he is going to be doing it. I am not hunter damage, but very consistent damage. Hmm. What the heck, Bard? I didn't know you started streaming, bro. I've been like behind. That's why I haven't really said much because I'm like delayed. Oh, I said that earlier. That oh, I, I didn't even I hear you. Said That's I realized you've been watching through me. stream. Yeah, I was like, let me throw this up for you. Yeah, what the heck, dude? Yeah, it's all right. We blame that one on production. Fuck those guys. Yeah, what assholes. <laughs> but, uh, all right. Soul Reaver here finished for the Karan. Everybody is at full build, full glyphs, ready to rock and roll. Light Tunnel bringing the Chester all the way over to this Bull Demon. Uh, and Chad, dude, just by the smell on his nose, knows that he is over here. And I don't think he's going to be very afraid to fight this Erling up anymore. I mean, look at that. He A one and a singular auto just traded back against like three autos from Erling. And he's got the HP 5 advantage on his side as well. A very dicey back and forth fight, fight coming from both sides. Auto attack characters going toe to toe. Those longer engagements aren't going to favor the Gilgamesh. A good turnaround in order to avoid that. But yep, he will get picked out there. Eucharak jumps in, looking to deal what he can on damage to Cody. But they did finally learn. They got to go on that Gilgamesh. Uh, and I think Eucharak needs to start making his way over to this. If he lets them get this for free, he is not going to be able to defend. Cody does get hit by the slam down. Uh, and yeah, they're going to look to back off here. A good step up from Eucharak in order to save that bull demon. And honestly, save this game from ending. Hmm. Right, the red buff is up. Eucharak needs to be careful about using his jump to take this if he's going to. Don't expect him to. I think he's going to play a little bit smarter and a little bit safer than that. But they are back on the bull demon while he is doing so. It's already down to about half HP and he is none the wiser. So they are going to get this for free. That is really unfortunate to see. That is very, very unfortunate. No words picked up from the red team. Ended up biting them in the butt here a little bit. Oh. Let's see, though. Maybe they can defend. It is still somewhat difficult to push into a team map. Although, Karan is ready to make his way in, I'm sure. It's going to be even harder to kill him than it is to kill Gilgamesh or kill Tiamat. Or kill Erling at this point. He's the tankiest one in the game. 
Maybe maybe the Erling is harder to kill. A little bit of light steel on that one. But whoever is engaged upon is going to have a very rough time dying. Hmm. Tablet of Destiny Prox coming in now. A huge ultimate coming out for the double taunt. A good pin as well. And they're just going to force them away and back into the Titan room for a free Phoenix. I worry that the blue team is just going to be able to do that same thing and kill the Titan the next time their ultimates are up. I think Eucharak needs to be a little bit less greedy on holding his beads uh, and just kind of use it to beads that first taunt. Make sure he's pumping out as much damage as quickly as he can because the PvE is just starting to come through. The Karan Erlang is too hard to kill if he's holding his relics to make sure he survives. And if they're fighting back in Titan Room, you know, he's got his well right there. He's got to make sure he's using everything he can in order to just keep the game alive. Pulse team has already advanced. That makes sense. Every other team is still playing. Mm -hmm. I told you, man. we're at that good part of the tournament. We got the top eight seeds all in the top eight for the tournament. I expect nothing but good games from this point. Alrighty. Light Tunnel on point with finding these Chesters and bringing them where he wants them. Hmm. Looks like Light Tunnel's looking for the Blink Ultimate. He's going to catch the team at, again, a really good Karan ult coming out. It will pull both of them back in. The pin's not going to hit. The three will root. That'll be Karan beads. Both actives coming out from the Erlang. But nobody dies yet again. It's just too hard to push into that Titan and into the Titan room and get a kill. Too much CC immunity. Too many actives. And, I mean, like I said, Timeline still hasn't even been proc yet for either of these uh, magical characters. Almost said mages, but that wouldn't quite be right. So, I, I don't know if we're going to see another death from them this game. I think we might see a Timeline get proc'd, but I we're going to be going for a very long one here. A very, very long one. Bull Demon's back up. Phoenix will be respawning soon. Looks like Light Tunnel might just be going over there to solo it again. Not expecting Chad and Eucharic to step up here. A little too risky for them to take a fight outside of the Titan room. Hmm. Uh, yes, layers. Yes, it was. Bull Demon will go down for the blue team. Phoenix just respawned. There is one more fire wave on the way if blue team decides they want to wait for it, but it doesn't appear so that they do. They just want to step in and start getting right to it and chipping away at this thing. Phoenix will go down. And here comes the Blink Taunt. Light Tunnel not able to grab both of them, but able to get those Tiamat beads. They will look to return that damage quickly. Gilgamesh actually taking a good chunk of damage here, and Yukrax going to get poked out a bit. Light Tunnel just focusing down this Titan, not wanting to fully commit. The Root Sprint comes out, stopping the Karan. Oh, but the team at abilities aren't hitting. He's having a little bit of difficulty, and they're starting to trade back. Gilgamesh gets a good jump out, but the pin is up, and it will hit. Good peel from the team at. Ooh. Cody will find him with the one there and get him down with the silence. Eucharic can't afford to back up here. He's got to keep stepping into this if he wants to hold this game up. But I think Light Tunnel is just going to step in. They're going to proc this timeline finally and end the game in front of him. That Karan oh, pick. what a match. Karan doing a lot. 
24,000 player damage for the Karan, 25,000 for the Yerlang, 14,000 and 20,000 for the Gilgamesh and the Tiamat. And blue team just outdrafted. They played the right game. They had the PVE, and, and Karan's just a better mage, it seems. He is just a much, much better mage, but a very, very good game. Very well played from both sides. If Ukarak would have known that they went back to the Bull Demon that extra time in order to, uh, or, you know, after Gilgamesh had died and he got the red buff, if he would have known that they went back to get that Bull Demon, he might have been able to save that game and take it around a little bit longer. But it did appear that fights were just going the way of Cody and Light Tunnel there. It wasn't much for Ukarak and Chad to do. But very, very well played from both sides. Very, very enjoyable game to watch. Uh, all right let's hop into this game here we'll go back to that conversation later we've got naja and baron against achilles achilles why the fuck did i just say it that way against achilles and Ryzen. uh i have been warned that this game's already been paused several times uh before it oh, even great. started let's go That's ahead great to hear yep there's pause number one Okay, pause number two. Uh -huh. And I've just been told that they're restarting. Beautiful. Beautiful. Awesome. All right, I guess back to this conversation a little bit. But wait, we wait, wait for okay. them to restart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wait, wait. Do you have other things to say? Because I have another thing. I have a question to ask, but okay, go ahead. Hit me with a question. Did you suggest anybody else yet out of the group? Um. The other person we were considering was um, Brendan. Oh, boy. Although, you two are not very similar. Uh, not very similar? Dude, I dude, don't think... Okay, no, okay, here's the thing. This is why it was you and Brendan, okay? Because Brendan likes to garden, and she's a very, like, homey person that I feel like Brendan would mix well with in that way. Um, Zach's not a religious person, like, at all. So that just wouldn't work. Ryan lives in Indiana, so that wouldn't work. Weston's taken. Blake's taken. Uh, Googie was also one that was suggested. But I, I haven't talked to Googie okay. about it. So it, it's all the here. single homies other than Zach. That were I, need, I need a link, bro. I, I will get you it after this stream. We can talk about it. Wait, wait. So, like... Would you have suggested me if you would have known that I wasn't yes. talking to that chick anymore? Yes. I, I suggested you as an option for if you stopped talking to that chick, but oh. I did not know what did, what What did what, your girl say about it? Uh, and we didn't talk a ton about you because of uh, the fact that you were, but... Oh, I mean, you didn't give me any free gas? Come on, dude. I mean, it, it, it was a very heat of the moment conversation, man. Hmm. <laughs> wait is that where she is too yes it's where both of them are oh ah. my girl and your potential girl uh okay okay we need to get these fucking smite matches going here yeah, people. What I are know we doing? man <laughs> Interesting. Uh, Damn it. Fuck you, Bard. Now I have like eight more questions, but I... you got to hold them, bro. Write them down. Put them in our DMs. No, no, dude. I, I, I need to, uh, I know what they are. You should know what they are. <laughs> yeah. I could take a guess to at least a few of them. All right. Hopefully we can actually get into the game this time. Should go to the gym. <laughs> Dude, imagine. I can't wait for him to explain to his grandkids that he first learned about his fucking grandma during a smite stream. <laughs> Holy shit, the lord. Wait, what? <laughs> Dude, wait, that's what? what somebody said about you. It's like, wait till he's see. explaining to his grandkids that he first got with their grandma during a smite tourney stream. <laughs> 
Yeah, we we got we we got a lot of stories already. Let's be honest. I uh... oh, we do. We absolutely do. What? Dude, are like, oh, never mind, dude. All right. <laughs> never mind. Uh, back to the in. smite gameplay here. <laughs> we got uh, <laughs> we've got Baron and Naja versus Achilles and Ryzen. Uh, looks like Baron and Naja are both gonna be going at Thebes early here. Which is a little interesting. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that one. I mean, they're just gonna not stack very quickly at all. They're also not clearing buffs together. That's the, a little weird. These guys are cooking I don't even up know some how to stuff, do that. And I have like 30 hours into the game. They, they are absolutely cooking some stuff up. But let's see. I mean, now I got half the XP. Yeah, I mean, they're just going to end up being behind XP for that now. I, that's so odd. Were you, who were you leaning towards again? Uh, I'm leaning towards Dudu and Calvin winning this game. I think their draft is a little bit better. Uh, just having that Achilles. And I think that the Raijin's going to be a little bit too... And I want to say a little bit here. too tanky. They we're are going, going in here. They got the horrific proc on the Naja. His Aegis is already down, that. so that's going to be a first blood. Yeah, this is the worry about playing a Naja and Baron comp. Your early game is so bad compared to the Achilles Raijin. They're just able to walk you down. Achilles getting that cheese horrific first blood. Just able to get it with basically no issue. This is not the start you want to see. Again, going back to that conversation we had a little bit earlier, talking about late game gods not wanting to give up that early game and they've already started to do it here with the first few waves good juke out by calvin there already trading back well not afraid to use that dash on the tower line as he should be he's more than able to just dash at this naja constantly i'm a little surprised that ryzen didn't just ult him there on the spot after hitting that too But they will steal minis. They're pretty solidly behind currently. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're already down 700 gold, which was more than we saw in the last game in the first, what, like 15 minutes? I think it was about a 400 gold lead. If they're able to seal back this red buff, there will be a little bit of hope for them. But I feel like this Naja is more likely to just die than steal the buff. I think that's kind of what Duduin's waiting for. We'll miss the ring bounce. He gets hit by the sun, Baron abilities go off, and they're just going to take the red and go their separate ways. That really hurts them again, too. Mm -hmm. Just this slow burn of a lead already coming out for the red team here. Achilles does have to be a little bit careful about using his dashes like that. Baron could force out the ultimate by pulling them into tower. Um, not that Achilles would die, but it would provide a pretty big safety net. For the blue team. Hmm. And they'll get their own blue buff here. Getting it before it gets invaded. Making sure they don't get too far behind. And the red team will get their first backs here. Getting that prophetic cloak. Uh, and not quite having enough for what I'm assuming. Wait, did he have enough? He did have enough. A just enough for his tablet of destinies I'm wanting to get those procs online i actually don't know how i feel about that item currently for this 2v2 tournament i feel like it's a little slow uh and as much benefit as it gives you later in the game i feel like it's an item that it's hard to afford the slots for in a game like this because you want the divine ruin um you know you want some pen you want book of thoth you want soul reaver but you also want cooldown because Duduin did not go the Sands of Time. He's going into that Conduit gem. So he's not going to be quite as tanky and he's not going to have his abilities up as much. Really relying on that Ryzen passive. Calvin will take a little bit of poke here. Not too much that he's in any sort of trouble. But it looks like blue team is just going to hand over this purple buff try it to get themselves their own minis 
uh, which they will do so successfully, but they are going to lose the meteor. And the fuck is the? <laughs> you haven't seen the meteor yet? No, dude. I've been fucking getting fucked over here, dude. All right. So the meteor uh, is basically just something that has ten like HP. You can only get rid of an HP with an auto attack. It drops a small meteor like what you see right there. That gives you like six XP and four gold. Uh, okay. And after you destroy all of them, this little scepter comes out that you can see floating around the Achilles right now. That does AOE damage around him, as well as when you stand near your tower, it will heal the tower. That's because, kind of yeah, just for some yeah, reason. Dude, every <clears throat> every single time, like around this time that we watched him, well, the first match I missed because of my dog, and then somebody called me, so I like I was watching, but I wasn't 100% paying attention because they needed help with some shit, so they were showing me. So yeah, that was the first time I've seen an all tournament. Yeah, that's fair. What dog shit caster I am. Hey, it's all right. You're here because you look cute. And... Wait, we don't even have face cam on. Wait a nope. Minute. Oh. Yeah, we're we're kind of just behind here today, Bart. Mm -hmm. I think is kind of what's happening. That's all right. We're more focused on, on the gameplay to. today. Ah, or the combos. Right. The the other combos, you know. True. 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 Definitely the other combos at this point, but. Um, yeah, I mean, the Naja ult forced out there by the Rajinal, not too much coming from that fight, uh, and they really did opt into the double Thieves build here. They're going to have what, a very what, hard time stacking that. What levels do they start kind of getting even since they're more late game blue team? Um, I'm not really sure. With the way these builds are going, if blue team will ever truly start to get even with these builds, uh, if they do, it's gonna be, you know, probably like th probably around like the four item mark, uh, three item mark, and they will probably all be around level twenty before then. But I'm expecting that Ryzen and Achilles will probably just look to play somewhat objectively get a early bull demon with their better secure or just you know tank the bull demon and dance around and then bait the blue team into a fight okay hmm. yeah there's just not really going to be a lot of damage on the side of naja and baron without like fully committing to Ryzen. Uh, and just praying that he doesn't beads the Naja combo. I just or feel have like they're up. pretty behind already. Mm -hmm. They're definitely going to be grasping at straws this game and just praying that they get the right one. Hmm. Yeah, Calvin you know going never had. This. What's that? You know those like Fruit Loop straws and shit. I never had one of those. I don't know why I just thought about that with your straw analogy, but that's what you just put into my brain, so thanks. I kind of want one of those now. Oh, Raijin dashing in. The Baron ult coming out. Killy's just going to run in and tank it. No Ooh. fucks given. Uh, and they I will get brought in by the tower. A lot of damage going to be taken there. Uh, I don't think Naja's going to be able to get the kill on this one. Uh, but they will get a lot of poke. Blue team is showing some signs of life there, fighting back. They're going to be able to get both the Meteor and the Red buff here. It's pretty big. I know. Maybe That's I started counting them out of this game a little bit too quickly. There's not a ton of damage coming from Calvin at the moment, uh, where Attire is starting to build into a little bit of damage already. So these next, you know, the next item or two could prove to be pretty big from both sides. That was a unfortunate ring bounce. Uh, and that is going to be stolen away by Calvin there. It's unfortunate denying that XP. Keeping that little bit of a lead they had, even though... Um, I was going to say even though they died, but he didn't die. Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't die, to be honest. Mm -hmm. He took a lot of tower shots going for that. A bit like... greedy of him not to just ult away. Yeah, I feel like the alt to put him in the air too. If he would have or ability, I should say, mm -hmm. should have waited like another second, they would have killed him. 
I mean, the hard part is that they wanted to keep him in tower range, and they didn't really have CC to keep him in at that point. Yeah. So, well, then poorly timed, but yeah, it could have perhaps been used slightly better. Uh, but Calvin just really... Uh, is he going to get pulled in there? He is. He is going to opt into using the ult finally. So that'll be both sides, or both ultimates out from the red side. Mad Tire's still holding on to that Naja ult. Hmm. We will see. It's just a lot of back and forth poke coming out from both sides right now. Uh, Attire with a really good Sash ult in. Going to be getting a little bit of follow-up damage. He won't have the Sash up here to chase. But they're able to turn on Calvin. Get a little bit of damage themselves. Something important also to note for this game is that Naja can Sash the Achilles ult uh, in order to immune it. So... He is not going to be a free ult fodder, even if his Aegis is not necessarily. This is just an absolute wet noodle fight going on right now. Uh, that looks like Calvin is eventually going to give up on. But Duduin is here. The Horrific comes out. He gets hit by that like slow, this. which is unfortunate. Baron ult is back up, which they have to be really careful of. That CDR coming into play there. But looks like nobody will be going down yet again. Hmm. Raijin trying to get this red buff on his own. He shouldn't be too much issue. Baron half health. Naja basically out of mana. I don't think they're going to be contesting it too much. They'll just grab the purple and grab their own blue buff. Make sure they're not falling behind in XP. I am really surprised to not see any anti-heal on the side of the red team so far. Naja's got healing. Baron's got healing. They've got meditation. It just seems like it would get a lot of value. But I suppose they're not in the biggest rush to do it quite yet. As long as Dudu pick, picks it up in this next item slot, I don't think it's too bad. Or Calvin will pick up a Brawlers, which will be decent. But I think Kellen does need a little bit, bit of a cooldown as well. I know, it just goes back to that Tablet of Destinies. Feels like it's just a little weird in this matchup. Maybe it's strategy. It's calculated. It may be. There you go. We've got the Brawlers picked up by Achilles. So they will have a bit of anti-heal outside of just the Horrific now. And Duduin's just going to grab up all those meteors. Leave the scepter for his Achilles. He's not going to be able to get a reset on his three there. But he just is so tanky. He takes absolutely no damage. Yeah, Ryzen having a really hard time getting these tablet stacks. Tire, or not at tire, due to and just playing his drums for fun at this point, waiting for these guys to step out of the base so that way he can actually get his stacks. Uh, and he is able to farm some there. Just slowly but surely, he is getting this tablet. <laughs> very, very slowly at that. <laughs> My. Oh, and they're going to lock down this Achilles. That was a good ult out by him, not wanting to play that one too risky. He knows if he's taking that many tower shots, he's just going to die. Oh, man, this game is putting me to sleep. I'm starting to yawn. Oh, here we go. Ryzen gets that? caught right on the edge of tower. Natalie dropping the bracer. They're going to get a good trade here into... Oh, if that sash would have hit, there might have been a chance for Attire to kill Ryzen. But... Oh, man. We finally got some action, and just as quickly as it started, it dies out. Scratch that. Sash in. The ultimate's coming out from both sides. Age is coming out from Attire. He doesn't have the Sash to immune Achilles ult, but Achilles ult isn't up. The Baron ult, or Baron heal comes through, and everybody's going to disengage again. Oh. 
And we are right back to square one. I do have to say that I like the aggression that's coming out of this blue team now. They're choosing their moments wisely. And they're showing that they can actually fight this. They don't just have to give way and let uh, the red team have their way, you know. They are able to fight back. They're able to take these sustained fights even against the tablet. And Duduin's just not even going any pe penetration. Going straight into the Soul Reaver here. Penetration just does so much for you. Both these characters have Thebes. Like, I don't know. Not going into the Divine for extra anti-heal. I'm just not with this Ryzen build right now. I think this Ryzen build could be a little bit better. I think it could have the Divine. I think it could have some pen. But, I mean, it's still a good build. It's still going to do what Duduin wants him to. So, you know, I can't knock on it too much. I can't knock on it too much. It's definitely not such a bad build that he'd lose the game by any means. There is definitely a better mm -hmm. optimal build. Mm -hmm. There we go. The Baron and Achilles ult will trade yet again. Man. These builds just look so ugly everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> like, the Naja rune forged, the double Thebes from blue team, the ethereal third item on Baron, the full blue book build coming out on the Ryzen. And the Achilles build, I don't hate, but it still just is slightly weird. I don't know, man. Just all the builds in this game, like, they're making my brain angry. That's all I can really say. <laughs> spaghetti I, noodle time. Yeah, very spaghetti noodled. You know? Hmm. Gemma Focus has been finished by Ryzen, though, so he's going to be a lot harder to dive. Bluestone Brooch also finished on the Naja, so his ring bounces are going to be doing a good bit more poke. But there we go. There's some damage coming online. That bonus damage and bonus mitigations that you get from Gemma Focus all starting to show their cards. Maybe I spoke too soon. Maybe the penetration isn't, or the lack of penetration isn't that bad. But the Gemma Focus is definitely going to be cooking this game. Gemma Focus doesn't give mitigations anymore. You're right. You are very much correct. Hmm. Focus, movement speed, damage increase. I mean, it's still a very good item. But it still had mitigation. I Paul's match is still up, broken. too. Yeah, that's fair. I expect that side of this tournament to be a very good match as well. I don't know if that one will go quite as long as this one seems like it's going to. But oh, they also this map also restarted too. Ah, I see. To be fair, so. <laughs> nope, not quite true. Other another, get them sponsored, and then my portion of it gets paid through by the ads. All right, uh, Naja stealing that buff away, doing absolute pebbles worth of damage to this Achilles. That is one tanky man. Hmm. Gosh, still only 40 stacks on that Ryzen. Oh, let's see. Will he finally start building penetration in his last item slot? The world may never know. Attire picking back up his tier one mace again. I wonder what he's going to start building into with that. Oh, he's got the full Titan's Bane now for that penetration. I mean, he's going to be doing some very non-zero amounts of damage. But I just don't know if it's going to be enough. A little bit of damage coming in with that Sash. They're going to force the Achilles ult out again, potentially. No. They're just going to full dive on this Baron. I tip it. There we go. 
there goes the timeline. They get the ultimate from the Achilles. Uh, some good damage coming out. Can Attire hit the ring bounce? He does not hit the ring bounce. That would have been a ton of damage coming out for him. Ryzen's still got to be very careful about taking this fight here. Both actives down. Achilles ult down. Najah's not going to go down too quickly. But it looks like he's just going to give this tower. He doesn't want to risk dying here. That Sundering Axe is starting to chunk him. Uh, can he get one more ring bounce? He can. Still not looking for that Sashin quite yet. Not wanting to risk going for it. And the red team will back off and get their red buff here. They haven't really made a play for uh, Demon yet, have they? Mm -mm. There has been absolutely no action on the Bull Demon yet. Uh, and at this point, I'm not really sure there is going to be. Duduin's not going into any penetration. He is going into what appears to be a Magi's. Uh, while Calvin is finally getting some real penetration online. It looks like their game plan is just going to be running down the Baron. Which I agree with. He's definitely going to be the easiest one for them to kill. Even though he is going to be a bit tankier than the Naja. The Naja is just kind of slippery. He's got that sash, got the ultimate. I like the rundowns. Hat Tire juking out a good bit there, but taking the tablet proc, the Soul Reaver proc, and getting hit by the Sundering Axe, he is just slowly getting whittled down here. And it looks like we might finally be getting some action at the Bull Demon. Duduin and Calvin starting this one up. Natalie and Attire seem to be none the wiser at the moment. Uh, Natalie actually just back, so this should just be free. It told you it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. yeah, nobody's stepping up to try and stop this. So that's a big find for the red team there. Very, very big find for them. I still don't know if they can just step up and take the Phoenix uh, super cleanly. There will be a bit of pushback from the blue team here. But it shouldn't... Oh, I thought that Achilles was going to use the backstop. Uh, but I don't expect the blue team to be able to stop uh, you know, the Raijin and Achilles from pushing in and slowly getting this Phoenix down. Losing that Scepter is honestly a big loss, though, because it means that Phoenix is going to be getting healed while they fight and make it that much harder to push into. Bracer's coming down. Kelly's doing a good amount of damage to this Naja now. And just slowly waiting for these Axe procs. There we go. It looks like they are just going to give this one up. And they are going to hope to just defend well. Uh, and hope that they can catch out some mistakes like they did in the last game. Nice, that Magi is going down with the Naja Sash in. Achilles will trade back a good bit of damage, but nothing big coming out from either side. Red buff is up. Right, Naja is up pretty far alone here. He is so fast. There's the ult in, there's a the Sash in. The Naja ult will get him out, but that's going to be a good bit of damage coming out on the Titan. Um, I don't think this Achilles is really... Needing to be too worried about dying here. Honestly, I don't know if that Ryzen beads was needed either. But they're going to walk down this Naja. Not able to hit him with the wow. last part of that Ryzen one. Focusing on the Titan more than the kill. And I think that just stopped them from ending the game. I think if Duduin would have just focused on hitting that one on the Naja, it would have killed. Maybe he got body blocked and wasn't in range. Or maybe he just thought Naja was dead. But securing that kill definitely would have secured the game. Hmm. Alrighty, let's see if the blue team can find any way back into this game. Or if that is just going to be all she wrote. And Calvin and Duduin will slowly walk in and put this one away. 
Hmm. Blood Demon's gonna be up soon. They might look to play this one slowly. No, it looks like Duduin's just going around the back, and they're just gonna go all in this Titan. Yep, there we go. The ultimate comes out, and there's just gonna be nothing you can do to stop them. A little bit too focused on the Achilles, but I mean, that's just what happens sometimes. I think they went for a little bit too much of the tank Baron route. He just wasn't able to deal enough damage into the Achilles Ryzen. Uh, even with the lack of pen on Ryzen, doing tons of damage against this team. I don't know. I feel like Attire and Adley got outdrafted a little bit. Um, as well as just outbuilt slightly. The lack of the axe on Naja, uh, although it helped them in the early game a lot, it really just made that level 20 fight that much harder. It didn't give him quite enough damage to like poke back with the Achilles, nor did it give him enough damage with the blue stone to kill the Raijin. But well played from both sides still, and that means Calvin and Duduin will be moving on to the finals. Oh, hopping into the first of the best of three for finals here. Paul and Layers versus Duduin and Calvin. We got the Osiris, Achilles, Vamana bands coming out from Paul and Layers. Afro, Thoth, and Erlang coming out from Duduin and Calvin. We've got one more band on each side. Oops. Uh, and that something to note is that Karan has made it through still. So Paul and Layers will ban Bologna. Hmm. I wonder if this set ban is going to come through this time. We've seen it in a lot of Paul games early in the tournament, but I don't know uh, how worried Duduin and Calvin are about playing against it towards the end of this tournament. You're thinking very hard about this last band, and they will get rid of the E shell. Not wanting to give Paul back that character from early in this tournament when he, you know, showed why he is to be feared on it. Hmm. You know, I'm not sure who I've got my money on this game. Paul picking his team at does make me want to lean towards his way. Paul has on, Paul. one of the best, if not the best, Tiamats in the entire game. Uh, and we've seen him play it in Pro League. I've seen him play it in community tournaments. I've seen him play it in Duel. I've seen him play it in Ranked Joust. Like The man has a very, very good Tiamat. He plays very safe and very calculated on it. Uh, that Gilgamesh is a pretty good counter pick, though. Lots of good interrupt and good chase down against the Tiamat, so long as you have Blink. Paul will have to be on point with his beads and using his jumps and CC immunities as well. As well as layers will need to be on point about keeping this Gilgamesh in combat, not letting him blink through for free. But that means that Amaterasu is just about the only auto attack character left open right now. But Kamazots was left open. That is a really, really good pick to get left through. Uh, I mean, Layers, being the jungler player he is too, I'm sure has absolutely no issues with this Kamzatz. He insta-locked that as soon as he could. Uh, and Duduin will fall back on this Ryzen, which Ryzen can't really escape Kamzatz. He is not going to have the easiest time with it. And we'll, we'll have to see how this one goes. I could see this one going either way. If Layers gets a little bit too caught up uh, and gets picked once or twice, he may fall too far behind. But if he gets any sort of lead, Raijin is just going to get ran down this entire time and there's nothing he's going to be able to do to stop it. These are two pretty solid drafts and it's just going to depend on who's able to do what they want with their draft. Hmm. Layers has said that Kama is his favorite god. That makes sense. But alrighty here, let's look at what starts we are going to get. 
I'm not expecting anything too unusual uh, from these past few games. Paul sticking to the sands of time into a book start, grabbing his beads as well. Uh, we will get a brief pause here as it seems Duduin has not connected. Hmm, but that's okay. Hopefully it doesn't take too long for him to get back here. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, so who are you rooting for this game? I got Paul's team. Uh, the classic Paul fanboy. Met him today. <laughs> yeah, and that's fair. And he just wowed me, you know. Yeah, you know, I, I got like the hard eyes, like the anime hard eyes. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I know what you're talking about. No, I think I do have to also give this game to Paul, though. I think I like their draft a little bit more. Um, and as much as Calvin and Duduin have impressed me with this tournament, I feel like they tend to build, um, you know, slightly suboptimally. And that's just not something you can really afford to do against Paul and Layers. Hmm. Yeah, I absolutely think Paul gets bitches. For sure. He has to. His name's Paul. True. All right. Uh, Dudu and has it, came back. We got the axe start coming out for layers. That's what I like to see. I mean, Sundering axe is just way too strong. Pretty much all of these games have been going to level 20 uh, to where you can get that Sundering axe or that axe of animosity. And it's just like, it's just the best starter. They're, like of all the tank starters to go with, it's just hands down the best starter. But we've got the blink coming out for layers here as well. The horrific start for Calvin on the Gilgamesh. Uh, Party Punch coming out for both mages. Um, I think it could work. DC? Oh, to DC? Well, no, definitely not. Down. But, uh, no. Nah. This horrific could end up being a good early kill if things go well. You know, Paul... Um, or not Paul. Um, layers jumping in too early might end up spelling a little bit trouble for him. Getting caught out with it. He will avoid that kick as they just clear this wave. Um, yeah, Layers already um. And Paul just wants to go back. Interesting. Just doing a very, very quick reset. Not wanting to mess with that one watch. Maybe worried about the amount of poke he took. But layers will delay here uh, and actually trade back pretty decently into the two of them. And there we go. That's some big damage coming in from Paul. Now they're going to turn on Raijin. Ooh. The Gilgamesh jumps in, but there it is. Kamazat still has that jump, so they're not able to do too much about it. They will get Paul's beads out there. So this is still a pretty dicey situation for both teams. Neither one really being able to commit too hard to this buff. Uh, and layers in kind of a really bad spot. Is Paul going to be able to save him from this one? No, Paul is going to end up going down to the Axe Box himself. Is Calvin able to catch him? No, he is not. They will get the ultimate out from Dudu in there. I'm surprised Kelvin didn't just ult him there and get the axe proc. I'm pretty sure it would have killed. But that is first blood on Paul. Layer is just hanging around a little bit too long. Ends up costing Paul his own life. But, I mean, that Ryzen and uh, Gilgamesh early, man. You have to respect it. And Paul is just going to look to eat and secure this buff. That being said, Layer's going in now. Catching that... It's a kill. Oh, yep, he is going to get the kill there. Uh, and he is just going to walk out the other side of the tower. He should die, die to though. Gilgamesh. Yep. I don't know if that's worth it. I don't think it is. It's a little tough to say. Because Paul's going to be able to trade with this Gilgamesh decently well. Uh, he does need to be a little careful here. He's doesn't have the cooldown yet in order to deal with it as well 
But I suppose sometimes, you know, you just have to assert dominance. This Gilgamesh is just holding on to this ult permanently. Hmm. Bard? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I accidentally unplugged my mic. Nice. Dude, doing will deny the Chester there. I accidentally unplugged my mic cord twice. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Layer's getting kicked onto his ooze puddle. Lucky that he's gonna save a little bit of HP with it, but he is getting a little bit uh, too big for his britches here in this early game, I'd say. Paul looking to go this tablet build as well. Uh, I'm expecting Duduin to do the same here. And they will secure their own blue buff. I don't know. This one's looking pretty uh, pretty okay. decent in the early game for the red team here. Hmm, Paul's going to have to be a little bit careful about this. But Lair's not, or deciding not to jump in. Paul will get kicked into that. Uh, and he will be forced to use his beads, but he is peeling well. Layers able to get that kill, and it looks like things are going to start turning around slightly for Paul and Layers here. The good kick, a good jump as well, but a better stun from Paul, and that's going to be those kills. Raijin just getting too aggressive. Like I said, he doesn't have any cooldown yet. That escape's not great. You can't really Raijin ult away the Kamazots because he's just going to ult your ult. So, I mean, having that Jotun's Rush getting that damage online, you just have to show him the respect and wait till you get a little bit more defense online. And, I mean, again, just going for this greedy tablet build, I mean, it's so good, but it just feels bad for the matchup again. I don't know. It's, this is also another matchup where I feel like having Divine Ruin is really good because Kamazots has a good bit of sustain. Um, you know, obviously the lifesteal from his passive as well as his jump, his vampire bats, and uh, just the ooze that he gets from the dead bodies. But Team at Flight Stance also has good amounts of healing on it because you get that passive sustain of when the minions die near you, you get healing and mana. And I just feel like he can't afford that slot when he chooses to go this build. We'll see, though. He proved me wrong last game. Maybe he'll prove me wrong again. Maybe the Gemma Focus will be all the difference once they hit 20. Hmm. Both teams kind of ignoring the Meteor for now. Looks like Paul and Layers want to be getting set up for this red buff and... Kind of moving around to see if they can get some sort of gank. Very good flick from Layers down that too. But there come the vampire bats. A good amount of poke coming out and goes basically untraded. Oh, layers not hitting the vampire bats means he is not going to be able to get this kill. Uh, and he might end up losing his own life for it. It's like he is going to get away from the Gilgamesh ultimate. Vampire bats are enough to slow him down, and they're just going to be able to walk away. Paul's going to do a tiny bit of peeling there with that slow. Uh, and just make sure that Gilgamesh doesn't take this blue buff from them. Well, just eat it and secure that it's their drop. No surprise there. Duduin looking to get a little aggressive himself. I like the aggression. There's very little mana on the side of Fallen Layers here, so there's not too much to worry about. Hmm, they might even be able to get their own red buff here, but Kelvin's also oom. Paul almost looking like he's getting slightly too greedy, but gets the mana back. They will lose red buff. Or Layers is going to take it away with his one. 
And he might even just be able to chase out Calvin here. The Axe Brock is going to do good. He will take Chester. Uh, and he will walk around. And Duduin is completely on his own. Oh, layers will trade. Getting greedy for it again, but getting that Aegis out, not a bad trade for him. Nothing expended on his end as far as cooldowns go. Oh, Paul just milliseconds away from getting that red buff. That's the worst feeling. Uh, and Calvin not stepping up to take this meteor away from him. Paul's just going to farm an extra tablet stack if he can, or he will steal away the mini. Same difference. Calvin trying to find a good fight. Paul with a better immunity. Uh, just, again, not really looking to kill here, but just using this fight as a way. Oh, maybe looking to kill. Uh, using this fight as a way to get those tablet stacks, get some extra Book of Thaw stacks. Uh, and he does have to be careful about this Ryzen but not too careful with the layers showing up to give him a little bit of damage peel. Oh, layers hunting down this Ryzen. Decides not to go for the greedy kill there. I think that's a smart decision. He is going to get a lot of poke out, but he's not quite able to bring that one home. Knows he's going to die if he goes too far to ult him there under the tower. But not bad. They have brought this back from that little bit of an early deficit they had. The Kamazots into Ryzen Dive is working very well for them. Hmm. Ryzen also opting into this exact same build as last game. Looking like he wants to stick to what he knows and what he's been using. I can't blame him too much, you know. I'm also a creature of habit. But it looks like they're going to give up that scepter there. Nope, Calvin actually was able to grab it. Layers didn't get quite into range of it at er, in time. But Paul, a few tablet stacks ahead. The bracer down for Dudu in there. And Paul's just going to jump in place. Calvin keeps trying to go for this jump kick, but he's starting to get poked out pretty heavily for it now. And layers also getting pretty poked out. Hmm. We may see a little bit more fighting coming through here. Paul will secure the red buff. He'll get the back away. And they're going to all in on him. That's a good beat coming out from Paul. If that taunt would have brought him back into the Gilgamesh hole, they might have been able to look a little bit deeper for that kill. But not wanting to risk it. Not quite on the same page about going for it. Just looking for that extra damage, extra stacks. Things will continue as is, and we're going to get to go that much later into this game. Here we go. This is what I was saying earlier, too, about having that sands of time. Allowing you a little bit more cooldown means Paul gets to go into this obsidian shard and get that penetration online. And as good as the tablet like proc build is with the Soul Reaver, the Gem of Focus, um, the book, the Tablet of Destinies, good old penetration is never going to be bad. It is never, ever going to be bad. Calvin taking a lot of poke here is going to go down to the swooping of the bat. Uh, layers, unfortunately, not on the mark with that vampire bat. Is Paul going to hit enough of them? He is. Wow. Very clean. And that's going to be this tower here. I expect it to also be Phoenix. They've got a little bit of a super wave built up, uh, as well as Paul's Phoenix ultimate. Sure. Should come back soon for minions. And that, I mean, a few level lead. They're going to go for game. 13 seconds. Yeah. They are going to go for game. Or at the game. very least, a lot game. of poke. Uh, yeah, okay. Not quite healthy enough to go for game. But a good bit of Titan poke doing a solid third of its HP off of that push. And, and that's the risk you take when you don't clear waves. When you opt into this tanky build, you don't have quite enough damage. 
Uh, or, you know, you have to grab the cooldown on this Raijin. And having layers have so much power already with that Blackthorn, the Jotuns, and the Beat Stick, just not building any defense at all. He is going to be absolutely swinging on those objectives. Hmm. Wonder how close is Paul to this Soul Reaver? It's 800 gold, so he's still a little ways off. They might wait before going for this Titan push to grab that. Um, they'll almost definitely grab this red buff and grab their meteor as well. I'm going to pull up the bands for you guys right there in chat. So I'm sure you guys are a little curious. Uh, Paul actually not going to over to eat the red buff. We'll just leave that as is. He can pick up his soul reaver and they want to look to get this push and use their strengths to their advantage right now. Uh, Slayers almost looked like he DC'd for a second. And he's just running straight at him. He doesn't care. Oh. Ryzen would have got hit by those vampire bats. Could have spelled a sticky situation. But Paul is walking up. And that damage is starting to stack up. Calvin's pushed to half. Paul's jumping in. Now they're just going to turn on Ryzen, who is not that tanky. They'll get his Aegis. They do have to be careful about fighting at this point. Uh. Unfortunate beads for Paul. He is going to return damage into that. Layers kills Duduin in the back. And Paul's just going to walk away from this one. I don't think Calvin's going to be able to kill him. He's going to have a hard time. Never mind. He gets the minion kick through him. So he is able to catch him. But Layers might just push this one and end. So we got 30 seconds on the rise and respawn. Calvin still hasn't backed. Layers is going to heal up. Uh, he will spot Layers there on the ward. But, yeah, Layers is just going to bead it and look to try and end here if he can. It's like he's going to decide. Oh, it's oh. not quite able to close it out. Uh, I know the Phoenix will be respawning, too. There's a chance for the red team here to bring this one back. They're going to have to play it very smart, but there is hope. They do have a little bit shorter respawns here. Dudu and died a bit before Paul. They could have maybe looked to go straight to Bull Demon or shove this wave and go straight to Bull Demon. I don't think they're going to be able to do it with Paul up, though. I think he's going to be a little bit too intimidating for them to make that uh, choice and go for that chance. Duduin will be able to grab himself the Scepter here, though, which means he's able to run back and go heal up that Phoenix, which will be very big. I'm kind of expecting him to just go sit by it. I don't know if he's aware of that information. It looks like he is. Yep. He is just chilling. And look at that Phoenix HP go up. That is... Oh, he's gone. All right. Looks like he wanted to finish Kronos. But look at this. This is such good regen coming up for this Phoenix. Getting that Scepter was a huge, huge victory for the red team here. The Phoenix is going to be basically back up to full HP for this push. Layers and Paul are going to have to look to try to play around this Bull Demon again, most likely. Uh, and the Phoenix is plenty healthy at this point where they can step up and fight it if they really want to. Hmm. Paul doing a good job of zoning right now and just doing a lot of poke to Kelvin with seemingly not a lot of abilities. His jumps down. They've got the full commit. Kicks down. Full committing on to Paul in the back line. He doesn't have any actives up. They are going to trade him for the Ryzen. And now we're going to have the two melees going at it. I think Layers is going to have his cooldowns back up in time. He's going to hit that Vampire Bat. Hits the jump. He's got his ooze to sit on. And he's got minion waves with 50, 40 seconds to play around with. This will definitely be that Phoenix again. I don't think he has enough time to end the game on his own. But still a big victory for Paul and Layers there. Calvin just getting slightly too greedy, forcing the start of that fight uh, by using his jump so early. Layers is going to have to back out a little bit there and reset to make sure he doesn't die to the Phoenix trying to take this. But that Phoenix going down again is going to be big, big trouble for the red team. 
Leos is just going to make his way out and reset. The Sundering Axe has been finished for Calvin. A little surprised he decided not to go into Axe of Animosity. I feel like it would help him, you know, trade into the Kamazots a bit more in those long engagements. Um... But, I mean, Sundering Axe is up fairly often. What is it? Every 10 seconds. That's not too bad. It is definitely helping them kill Paul. Uh, you know, it it's a toss-up decision on which way it wants to go. I guess he's not building very auto-attack based. So, the uh, Sundering Axe makes a little bit more sense than the Axe of Animosity. But, Paul, very aware of where Calvin is. Did I speak too soon? be a good kick Fryjan not really getting caught but they just decide to full dive him Paul is gonna get killed here again it appears some good peel coming out no he, Calvin's not able to capitalize on the kill that should just be game unless Sundering Axe proc hits he's not quite able to catch him and Paul will live I respect the effort wow. of going for the team out there but I think he just had to commit to that fight sooner. Uh, he probably would have died to the Kamazats anyways. But, I mean, it really, again, just comes back to, I don't like that Ryzen build. That Ryzen build does not hold up to the Tiamat build that is basically doing the same thing as you. The Tiamat just does more damage, uses the build more effectively. You don't have the cooldowns on Ryzen. You don't have the self-peel. You don't have as many abilities. And you're trying to deal with a Kamazats diving you. It's just too greedy of a build, in my opinion. But that's a, a very solid game. Definitely worthy of being the final. Some very good early back and forth. I am not disappointed by that in any means. A very good showing by Duduin and Calvin in that game. Even though it looks a little bit rough, it was very well done. All right, game two here of the finals. We've got Bologna picked up for Duduin and Calvin with the first pick. The Tiamat re-picked up for Paul, as well as Layers getting the set through. The Kamazats did get banned this time, which makes sense. Layers was tearing through the, the Ryzen with it last game. It's definitely not something you want to give him again, but... <laughs> oh, oh, excuse me. What a time for a sneeze. Um, I don't think this set is going to be that much better. I don't think it is going to be much better uh for trying to survive with any god other than tiamat for that matter the baron is still open which is decent self peel um but i've played that matchup several times before in duel and it's still not fun for baron as well as i think baron is just going to end up getting ran down by tiamat over time so atlas i don't mind this pick it's a little interesting, but if they're able to get late game, it's got a lot of promise to it. It's going to be really hard for Set to like really kill these tanks. Um, Balone is just kind of going to auto attack him, and unless he just builds a ton of damage and plays super safely, then he's never really going to be able to kill them either. You can't build tank Set and just shred through Bologna Atlas. Um, Paula and Layers, one game, one protege. But I don't mind this pick. The early game is going to be rough. There's going to be a lot of buffs going the way of uh, Paul and Layers just because they have that team at secure and not really much secure on the side of Atlas or Blona. But, I mean, it's going to be really hard to kill either of these characters. Hmm. I don't know. I The flavorful, like, smite watcher of me wants to give this one to the Atlas Bologna. I think it's a really good draft into the set, not picking a mage or somebody that's going to die to him. And Atlas does really good amounts of damage. But... Can they get to that point of the game is the question. Hmm. That'll have to be what we wait and see. It's 
This low delay spectator is not kicking in quite as quickly as I was expecting it to. But that's all right. Hmm, I don't know. I don't know. Full build, full six item start is built. It's going to be a lot of poking and a lot of playing the cat and mouse game from the Tiamat in the set. But if they're able to get a good all in, I think I actually give it to Bologna Atlas. I think they would actually win that fight. I don't know. It all depends on if they can lock down Paul, though. Or lock down layers. Like, they have to lock down one of them. And those are not easy gods to lock down. I'm also very curious to see if layers opts into a little bit more tanky build this game. Or if he uh, continues to just do this Jotun's Blackthorn, uh, you know, building a slightly bruisery, but a lot more just like a full-on assassin with Blackthorn. No, I suppose he did build Genji's last game, so he'll probably opt into being a little bit tankier. Maybe we'll see him pick up, like, a Transcendence this game just for a bunch of power. But I feel like it's more likely he'll just end up building into, uh, like, a Heartseeker Serrated and just really abusing cooldowns and staying alive. Sorry, my eyes are getting kind of dry. I've been staring at this screen a lot. All right, there we go. Finally loading into the game. Game two of the finals. Due to win and Calvin. Bologna and Atlas versus Paul and Layers. On I got the Paul here again. Set. I don't know if you asked me earlier, but I ran upstairs to fill up my water. Gotcha. I I don't know. I actually kind of want to give this one to Calvin and Due to win. I like their draft a lot into the set, but... It is a very, very patient, very poke-and-run style game that is about to be played. Um, Paul is absolutely going to have no issues getting away with going his uh, Tablet of Destinies, going his Soul Reaver, getting that Obsidian Shard late game, uh, as well as Layers is going to do a lot of damage come level 20 with that Sundering Axe. It looks like we've got a pause here at the start of this game. So Duduin not getting in quite as fast and Calvin wanting to make sure that his teammates got as much time as possible. Yeah, I don't know. If we play a poke game come level 20, Paul and Layers are going to win this game hands down. Okay. If we take an all-in fight at level 20, I think Calvin and Duduin win the fight. I could see it being close. I could see uh, maybe it's one kill to two kills. Maybe it's uh, no kills on either side and people just back out. But I can't see a way for an all-in a fight to occur at level 20 uh, without like at least like one or two abilities coming out from either Paul or Layers to get that initial poke in. I don't know. I just I've played Atlas. I've played against Atlas. That god is a monster come end game. And Calvin seems to be building him like a mage here. He's going to be hopefully not going Tablet of Destinies. That would worry me a little bit more. Um, but he will grab that Horrific. I think he gets that Book of Thoth. I think he gets some good penetration. Maybe like a Spear of the Magus. As well as a Staff of the Mirden. Something like that. And I, I think they've got a good chance. I think they've got a really good chance here. And it looks like Layers is going to opt into continuing that damage build. I and mean, I can't blame him too much. It's just going to be lots and lots of poking. Duduin going into what I'm going to assume is a prophetic cloak here. I don't really agree with that. I think he should just be going straight into his Phalanx, his Shoujins, or some like Talisman, even Gauntlet of Thebes. Um... But he really needs to have those auto attack items online and be a major threat in this game. I don't think he can wait to get this prophetic stack. Uh, and that's going to be a big jump in. Good damage coming out. Layers is going to have his cooldowns up. The Horrific is going to come out, which doesn't work against Set because he's slow immune. And they're just going to walk away with first blood there. And this is what I was worried was going to happen. You can't commit to these early game fights. You are two very, very late game characters. 
with Bologna and Atlas. Although Bologna does trade decently in the early game, Atlas will not trade that well. He needs too much cooldown. He needs his items online. They just needed to play this game a bit more patiently in the early game. That will be a good secure from Dudu in there to make sure he gets himself level 5. But, yeah, the horrific pickup I don't quite agree with. And the early game fighting, I mean, they just had to wait longer. You have to get your items as line, or online as this draft. Your biggest downfall is going to be if you decide to try to take these early game fights here before Atlas is really a big factor. But on the bright side for them, the first blood did go to layers, which I think is a little bit better than it going to Paul. Paul's just going to have a little bit safer secure, and him getting those proc items online faster is far too scary for them. Red buffs up. Yeah, Calvin's not going to be able to do much to steal there. I like Duduin just going ahead and grabbing the meteor over here. Grabbing Dwayne's Johnson, as some say. Um, yeah, I do believe Atlas took a tower shot uh, when he threed in during that fight. It looks like Paul's having a little bit more fun this game. He knows this one's going to be going nice and long as we get a second pause coming in here and it appears Duduin might be lagging a tiny bit we're gonna blame that first blood on Duduin lagging they definitely would have had that game all right that's, that's fair yeah definitely would have had that fight yeah it is also just unfortunate that atlas went in slightly too far for that three and ended up taking a tower shot or else they wouldn't have been able to all in him and kill him there but that's what happens man you take one misstep and it's you know, it's Paul and Layers. It's two professional level players. Even with Layers being a little bit rusty, you know, he's still going to have good mechanics. He's still going to have pretty good decision making. And when you've got Paul at your side, you're just going to punish people. One misstep and you're going to get a kill for it. You're going to get a buff for it. You're going to get the meteor for it. You'll get something off of it. Hmm. Also realizing that the music stopped. So let me go ahead and get some of that going while we've got a little bit of downtime here. Hopefully this pause doesn't last too long and Duduin is able to get back in without too much trouble. And there we go, he is back. So I expect this will unpause shortly here. This is and, uh... you know, it's unfair. We're about to get right into the action. Mm hmm. I mean, look at what's going on with these minions right now, bro. These guys are getting absolutely cooked. This is ragdoll physics, man. I can't wait to see what happens to the minions and their ragdoll physics in Smite 2, actually. If minions keep their same AI with how goofy they are, it's going to be so hilarious to just watch them like fly out into the sky and just disappear into the stratosphere. Dude, they need to add like minion sounds. Like obviously there's minion sounds, just, but like like the villagers stuff, sound. They need to like bro. moan and shit. Oh yeah, like God. something you like that. Add, like just, her. Her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down for that, dude. Add minion death noises to Smite too. Alright, the layer's gonna push that wave so they come over here and keep grabbing this farm. Tablet stacks on the way. Paul taking the safe route. Not wanting to step up too much into that Atlas Bologna power. Uh, and this Prophetic is already online for Bologna. And I mean, as long as he's able to get the stacks for this, um, which honestly shouldn't be the worst. He's got his disarm in order to get stacks off of Paul consistently through the game. But I don't know, man. It, it's the early game fight that they end up dying in that makes these builds so much harder for me to get behind. It's just like oh, you're, here. you're just being greedy gotta and it. you're you're going to get caught out for it, man. You're going to get caught out. When you're greedy and you fall behind, you lose games. That's fair. There you go. Be, Calvin, yeah, thankfully, I feel like you learned that like eight years ago. Uh, like, yeah, that'd be accurate. But uh, thankfully, Calvin not going that Tablet of Destinies. He did just go the Book of Thoth. 
but I mean, pollen layer is just going to be ruthlessly annoying here, never letting those two back. Trying to keep them around as much as they can for those tablet stacks and see maybe if they can find a kill, but doesn't look like anything of the sorts is going to be happening. It'll just be the stacks for Paul and the stacks for Dudoin and they'll walk away. Hmm. This is going to be a very slow burn type of game, that's for sure. Dudoin looking for another stack here. He will find it. It's actually going to be harder for him to get stacks on layers this game, I think, than it is for him to get on Paul, since Paul's constantly going to be trying to get his tablet stacks. Uh, and can we take a peek at what he has here? Don't think we can. Can I see what stacks he has uh, specifically? But as somebody who's played against that several times, um while trying to stack a prophetic if he's the only melee character or the only physical character that you're able to get stacks off of i wish you good fucking luck because that god is able to just sit anywhere on the map and hit you and you're not able to catch him dudewin is gonna have to like shield bash and then disarm just to get that stack and that's gonna spell different types of issues for him so he's got to make sure yeah he's focused on getting them now while he can Hopefully, he gets a pretty good even split and is able to farm them pretty decently. But he's already having a rough time. Layers beads are going to get taken there. Not in too much worry. Not too scared. Yeah, Paul's just going to keep bowling and keep getting these tablet stacks. They have no reason to just shove this wave, so... They are just going to keep doing everything they can. Paul's going to take a little bit of damage there. The bludgeon doesn't hit. Calvin taking a lot more damage. And Paul and Layers look to get a little bit active here. Oh, that was a really good Ooh. ult from the Bologna. Good Atlas ult coming through. And that's going to be a kill with that Thorns. And yeah, that's what uh, I was talking about. If, if you don't give up that first blood in the early game. And again, it was rather unfortunate that Calvin took that tower shot. But if you don't give up the early game, this is a really good draft. Like, Atlas is a very hard god for set to kill, as well as just a good god when it comes to CC. Blona is able to ruthlessly beat the crap out of anybody with all of her Swiss Army knives in her kit. Um, and yes, Paul is going to do a lot of poke damage, but that's something you just kind of have to eat. You have to get to that late game get your items online and then you just dive together you all in fight you dive you get the atlas ult you get the pulls you get you know sets beads or tms beads early and it's a huge struggle for them to deal with yeah atlas healing up that tower as well here using that scepter to his advantage Gonna make sure they have to get that whole thing in one go if he has any say in it. I also like this Pridwin pick up a lot from Atlas here. Uh, I do hope that he grabs that Staff of Mirden as well, but getting that Pridwin online early is gonna make him that much harder to kill. He's gonna have the bonus damage coming out from his shield, um, as well as just the very, very important cooldown that he is getting from it. So I, I like the build a lot um, from both sides here for the most part. Again, I'm still a little bit hesitant on this prophetic, but this game is going at a slow pace. does look like they won't have too much issue doing it. Or uh, Duduin won't have too much issue stacking it. So there is a fair chance. As long as he stays consistent uh, and is getting it with decent timing, then he'll be all right. Yep, there's that shield bash dash. Layers is over at Bull Demon soloing it while Paul's going for stacks. This is one thing that they have to be very careful of when you don't have any wards or anything like that. But I think Duduin knows. They are going to get Layers to step off of it just by showing in that jungle there a little bit. 
Paul going to have to use his ult. He's going to get all in here. Oh, and they are able to catch him there. This is what I'm talking about, man. This draft. It's a very solid draft. Layers and Paul have to play that poke and run game. Have to get super late. A really good beads out from Layers. Does he have the three up? Oh, the one's not quite going to connect. He doesn't have beads. He's got to be really careful if he looks to dive there. I don't think a 2-3-1 is going to kill Atlas in time. And he's not able to catch him there. But it's that all-in I'm talking about, man. It's that all-in. And Atlas has already upgraded into his damage Pridman here. That's what I like to see. Just, they've got to play their comp. They have got to do it, and they are starting to play it well now. Paul is going to have to show a little bit more respect to this die from both of them, and Layers is going to have to hang around him to help out just a little bit more. This will get harder as the game goes on, and Tiamat gets her uh, timeline, or potentially gets himself a Genji's or a... Um, I mean, a breastplate, something of his own, some other form of defense, maybe a spirit robe, maybe a mantle. Uh, actually, mantle is definitely the one that I feel like he should get now that it comes to mind. But it is going to get harder to kill this Tiamat. And it, I mean, I, I hope they're able to keep pulling it off, man. I like this draft. I really, really like this draft. Here we go. Good interrupt. Layers and Paul will both back and reset. Executioner already finished on the Bologna. Brawlers picked up. Obsidian Shard picked up. Hmm. Layers really likes this Brawler. I don't know if it was really needed in this one. Uh, I feel like it's kind of just extra at the moment. Maybe he's looking to disable a little bit of that Sundering healing. But... You know, I guess Bologna also has their three. It's not the worst pickup, certainly. But I almost would have liked to see Layers go into some more hard penetration there. Or go into something that's just going to make him really tanky. Just, you know, like a third item Gauntlet of Thebes or something. Something that just means he's never going to die. He's never going to have to build another defense item. Because uh, that will start to become an issue at some point in this game. There we go. They're just going to trade some stacks here again. Tablet for Prophetic. Uh, but Paul's jumped. They are going on different characters here, though. So Paul's going to get chased down by that three. He's going to get hit by the drunk. Good knockup to stop the bludgeon, but that thorns is going to kill him, man. I just don't think Paul is able to use his jump that freely. A good turnaround kill by Layers. Uh, and we're just going to get nothing at this point. Layers is just going to play it safe. He's going to go ahead and clear with his 2-1. But, yeah, Paul just jumping slightly too freely. This all-in comp needs to be focusing on him. And it's very hard for him to survive it when they do so. I also really like this coin pick it up coming out of this Atlas. They know that they're going to be able to get a decent amount of stacks for it. Um, as well as getting that extra movement speed will be really, really big on him. Just having every single little advantage they can for chasing down this Tiamat is going to be a big benefit for them. Hmm, layers making sure to hold this way for Paul. Being very efficient with that XP. Not something you see a lot of players do, but he knows he's ahead. He knows Paul needs to catch up a little bit. So getting him that XP is a big deal here. Getting him to 20 as fast as they can is going to help out a lot. Paul needs to be careful here. He's going to get grabbed. That is going to be his beads. He should have his jump up very soon. Layer's going to chase out the Atlas here a bit. Um, as well as Layer's looks to be going into that Genji's again. A great backstab to avoid the pull there by Atlas. And this fight looks a little bit more like what I was expecting them to. Good turn and poke. Just playing that cat and mouse game. They need to get tons of poke online. They can't let the all-in fight happen against Atlas Bologna. They are too tanky to deal with. Uh, 
All right, Genji's finished for set. I expect Paul will be finishing his Soul Reaver very shortly here. Uh, only a few hundred gold. He'll probably go grab it after they grab that purple. Bologna finishing her Shoguns here as well. He'll likely finish off that build with Axe of Animosity and Kins. Sundering Axe also is in a bad move, but I think the consistency from Axe of Animosity is just something he's going to want. Uh, they shouldn't really have a lack of damage against diving this TM at with the Axe of Animosity over the Sundering Axe. They're still going to have plenty to all in him with. And the Axe of Animosity just is really their only way to ever even consider doing Bull Demon. Because Atlas isn't going to do anything to that. That might be their late game advantage, honestly, then. Mm -hmm. It definitely will be an advantage of sorts. Dudoin going to take a bit of damage here. Good look for a pull by Calvin, but not able to get it. Great knock of immunity from the dash there. Lair's going to look to do a little bit of all-inning here. Uh, I do believe he used his ultimate. So it's going to wear out here shortly. Oh, there we go. His ultimate is down. Paul will grab red buff uh, as he is just waiting to eat it. There we go. Oh, I was worried this game was not going to go the distance. But Calvin and Duduin continue to surprise me, even with that little bit of a mess up early. They are playing very calm and collected. And I, they drafted very, very well for this game. They knew what was happening after last game. And they figured out a way to counteract it in just mere minutes. It was a few minutes between the first game and the picks and bans. And they figured out a plan and they are executing it pretty well. Paul has now finished that Soul Reaver though. So it's going to become even harder for them to deal with him. Calvin taking a lot of poke. Good Bologna ult coming through. But the dive by layers is better. Is he able to get in range? Not quite. And that should probably be the tower here for Paul and Layers. They're just taking a little bit too much poke now. They have to just like really hammer home these engagements. Blona is able to do a lot, but there we go. That's a good blink in. Backing out here, playing very safe. Gosh, that TM at poke, man. The Obsidian Shard, extra pen, the tablet, the Soul Reaver all getting procced at once. Oh my god, that will be one more prophetic stack, but Duduin's got to be careful for his life here. Uh oh. Paul hits enough uh -oh. of those, and that's another two from Paul to secure the kill. Just those procs coming online. You have to respect it, man. You have to. Unfortunately, layers did back there, so they're not going to be able to get the Phoenix off of this. But they will get a decent chunk of it. Yeah, Duduin thinking he's a little bit too safe. So now Layers is back. 30 seconds still on the Bologna. Yeah, Layers is just going to eat that pull. I mean, does he even have beads up? He doesn't have beads up. But he's not too worried about it. They're just going to be able to step in here. Grab this Phoenix. Great escape there by Paul, knowing where he has to play and where he's able to avoid the Atlas. But it's that one slight misstep. Oh, and they're able to get yeah. another kill on him. They've just got them on rotating timers now. Not allowing them to fight together is just giving them every advantage you could ever ask for. Any 2v1 is going to be extremely difficult to win. We did see an amazing outplay in the first round today in a 2v1 by the Crit X Ball. But Bologna is not a god that you style on people and get that outplay. Atlas isn't a god you style on people and get that outplay. Tiamat might be able to be that god that you can style and get an outplay. And, I mean, Set, Set's just going to run away and then never let you push anything. He doesn't have to outplay. But Atlas will be back up soon. We've only got about 10 seconds left. That Axe of Animosity is picked up 
for Bologna, but he's struggling to find the ways in. And Layers is just out farming. He looks to be trying to make his way towards the 3k pot. Uh, how much gold does he have in hand, actually? Okay, he's got 300 gold. I take that back. He's just grabbing up all the farm in case they do go that long. But he's full build now. And, I mean, it's just... This has became the gold game. The Atlas and Bologna are a little bit too far behind. They lost a few too many buffs due to the early game. And this Atlas isn't quite tanky enough with just the Pridwin. Paul is diving. I'm going to force the Bologna ult back into well. But Layers is just going to tank up that Titan for Paul to run away. Good blink by Duduin. The double thorns coming out is going to definitely catch Paul's timeline. It will also catch Calvin's timeline. A good pull coming in, but not enough follow-up damage. Can Duduin hold this one? I don't think so. The Tiamat damage is coming through. He's just going to have to jump in all in it, and that is going to be game two of the finals. It looked promising uh, for Calvin and Duduin. They showed signs of life. They showed some really good fights running down Paul, but you just make that one misstep, and they get you on those alternating timers, and it's just killer, man. It's killer. But a very good game, nonetheless, from both sides. Again, I really like the draft there from Duduin and Calvin. I think it was a great concept, uh, but... You know, Paul on Tiamat, something that's not going to be easy to deal with. It's extremely hard to run down a set. I, It was a great game, nonetheless. I really enjoyed watching it. I hope you guys all enjoyed watching it. We'll take a quick peek here at the damage. Yeah, Paul with 30k damage there. Nothing surprising. Layers even with 20k of his own. I wasn't sure he's was going to be able to keep up quite as well. But I, he did pretty dang good. But... A wonderful finals a wonderful wonderful tournament i hope you guys enjoyed that thank you to everybody who played in the tournament everybody who came here to watch um you know shout out to paul and layers for coming back winning that 2v2 tournament it's good to see them back good to uh i good to have them i'm still a little surprised they were here instead of playing in bobby's conquest tournament but also shout out to calvin and duduin very surprised very impressed by the way they played the tournament today Builds made me feel a little bit iffy, but they showed their quality players and that they can hang with the big boys. And I mean, I definitely could have seen them taking a game away. I, I don't know, man. I just loved that draft. I loved the Atlas pick. It felt so good. It felt so very, very good.